Jasher chapter 27 And Esau at that time, after the death of Abraham, frequently went in the field to hunt. And Nimrod, king of Babel, the same as Amraphel, also frequently went with his mighty men to hunt in the field and to walk about with his men in the cool of the day. And Nimrod was observing Esau all the days, for a jealousy was formed in the heart of Nimrod against Esau all the days. And on a certain day Esau went in the field to hunt, and he found Nimrod walking in the wilderness with his two men. And all his mighty men and his people were with him in the wilderness, but they removed at a distance from him, and they went from him in different directions to hunt. And Esau concealed himself for Nimrod, and he lurked for him in the wilderness. And Nimrod and his men that were with him did not know him. And Nimrod and his men frequently walked about in the field at the cool of the day, and to know where his men were hunting in the field. And Nimrod and two of his men that were with him came to the place where they were. And Esau suddenly started from his lurking place and drew his sword and hastened and ran to Nimrod and cut off his head. And Esau fought a desperate fight with the two men that were with Nimrod. And when they called out to him, Esau turned to them and smote them to death with his sword. And all the mighty men of Nimrod who had left him to go to the wilderness, heard the cry at a distance, and they knew the voices of those two men, and they ran to know the cause of it, when they found their king and the two men that were with him lying dead in the wilderness. And when Esau saw the mighty men of Nimrod coming at a distance, he fled, and thereby escaped. And Esau took the valuable garments of Nimrod, which Nimrod's father had bequeathed to Nimrod, and with which Nimrod prevailed over the whole land, and he ran and concealed them in his house. And Esau took those garments and ran into the city on account of Nimrod's men. And he came to his father's house, wearied and exhausted from fight, and he was ready to die through grief when he approached his brother Jacob and sat before him. And he said unto his brother Jacob, Behold, I shall die this day, and wherefore then do I want the birthright? And Jacob acted wisely with Esau in this matter. And Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, for it was so brought about by the Lord. And Esau's portion in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham had bought from the children of Heth for a possession of a burial ground, Esau also sold to Jacob. And Jacob bought all this from his brother Esau for value given. And Jacob wrote the whole of this in a book, and he testified the same with witnesses, and he sealed it. And the book remained in the hands of Jacob. And when Nimrod, the son of Cush, died, his men lifted him up and brought him in consternation and buried him in his city. And all the days that Nimrod lived were two hundred and fifteen years, and he died. And the days that Nimrod reigned upon the people of the land were one hundred and eighty-five years, and Nimrod died by the sword of Esau in shame and contempt. And the seed of Abraham caused his death, as he had seen in his dream. And at the death of Nimrod, his kingdom became divided into many divisions, and all those parts that Nimrod reigned over were restored to the respective kings of the land, who recovered them after the death of Nimrod. And all the people of the house of Nimrod were for a long time enslaved to all the other kings of the land. Jasher chapter 28 And in those days after the death of Abraham, in that year the Lord brought a heavy famine in the land. And whilst the famine was raging in the land of Canaan, Isaac rose up to go down to Egypt on account of the famine, as his father Abraham had done. And the Lord appeared that night to Isaac, and he said to him, Do not go down to Egypt, 
But rise and go to Gera, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, and remain there till the famine shall cease. And Isaac rose up and went to Gera as the Lord commanded him, and he remained there a full year. And when Isaac came to Gera, the people of the land saw that Rebekah, his wife, was of a beautiful appearance. And the people of Gera asked Isaac concerning his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he was afraid to say she was his wife, lest the people of the land should slay him on account of her. And the princes of Abimelech went and praised the woman to the king, but he answered them not, neither did he attend to their words. But he heard them say that Isaac declared her to be his sister, so the king reserved this within himself. And when Isaac had remained three months in the land, Abimelech looked out at the window, and he saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife, for Isaac dwelt in the outer house belonging to the king, so that the house of Isaac was opposite the house of the king. And the king said unto Isaac, What is this thou hast done to us in saying of thy wife, She is my sister? How easily might one of the great men of the people have lain with her, and thou wouldst then have brought guilt upon us? And Isaac said unto Abimelech, Because I was afraid, lest I die on account of my wife, therefore I said, She is my sister. At that time Abimelech gave orders to all his princes and great men, and they took Isaac and Rebekah his wife, and brought them before the king. And the king commanded that they should dress them in princely garments, and make them ride through the streets of the city, and proclaim before them throughout the land, saying, This is the man, and this is his wife. Whoever toucheth this man or his wife shall surely die. And Isaac returned with his wife to the king's house. And the Lord was with Isaac, and he continued to wax great and lacked nothing. And the Lord caused Isaac to find favor in the sight of Abimelech and in the sight of all his subjects. And Abimelech acted well with Isaac, for Abimelech remembered the oath and the covenant that existed between his father and Abraham. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Behold, the whole earth is before thee. Dwell wherever it may seem good in thy sight until thou shalt return to thy land. And Abimelech gave Isaac fields and vineyards and the best part of the land of Gerah to sow and reap and eat the fruits of the ground until the days of the famine should have passed by. And Isaac sowed in that land and received a hundredfold in the same year. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And when the days of the famine had passed away, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said unto him, Rise up, go forth from this place, and return to thy land, to the land of Canaan. And Isaac rose up and returned to Hebron, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all belonging to him, as the Lord commanded him. And after this, Shelach, the son of Arpachshad died in that year, which is the eighteenth year of the lives of Jacob and Esau. And all the days that Shelach lived were four hundred and thirty-three years, and he died. At that time Isaac sent his younger son Jacob to the house of Shem and Eber, and he learned the instructions of the Lord. And Jacob remained in the house of Shem and Eber for thirty-two years. And Esau his brother did not go, for he was not willing to go and he remained in his father's house in the land of Canaan. And Esau was continually hunting in the fields to bring home what he could get. So did Esau all the days. And Esau was a designing and deceitful man, one who hunted after the hearts of men and inveigled them. And Esau was a valiant man in the field, and in the course of time went as usual to hunt. And he came as far as the field of Seir, the same is Edom. And he remained in the land of Seir, hunting in the field a year and four months. And Esau there saw in the land of Seir the daughter of a man of Canaan, and her name was Jehudith, the daughter of Beri, son of Ephah, from the families of Heth, the son of Canaan. And Esau took her for a wife, and he came unto her. Forty years old was Esau when he took her, and he brought her to Hebron, the land of his father's dwelling place, and he dwelt there. And it came to pass in those days, in the hundred and tenth year of the life of Isaac, that is in the fiftieth year of the life of Jacob, in that year died Shem, the son of Noah. 
Shem was six hundred years old at his death. And when Shem died, Jacob returned to his father to Hebron, which is in the land of Canaan. And in the fifty-sixth year of the life of Jacob, people came from Haran, and Rebekah was told concerning her brother Laban, the son of Bethuel. For the wife of Laban was barren in those days, and bare no children, and also all his handmaids bare none to him. And the Lord afterward remembered Adana, the wife of Laban, and she conceived and bare twin daughters, and Laban called the names of his daughters, the name of the elder, Leah, and the name of the younger, Rachel. And those people came and told these things to Rebekah. And Rebekah rejoiced greatly that the Lord had visited her brother and that he had got children. Jasher, chapter 29 And Isaac the son of Abraham became old and advanced in days, and his eyes became heavy through age. They were dim and could not see. At that time Isaac called unto Esau his son, saying, Get, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow. Rise up and go forth into the field, and get me some venison, and make me savory meat, and bring it to me, that I may eat, in order that I may bless thee before my death, as I have now become old and gray-headed. And Esau did so, and he took his weapon and went forth into the field to hunt for venison, as usual, to bring to his father as he had ordered him, so that he might bless him. And Rebekah heard all the words that Isaac had spoken unto Esau, and she hastened and called her son Jacob, saying, Thus did thy father speak unto thy brother Esau, and thus did I hear. Now therefore hasten thou, and make that which I shall tell thee. Rise up and go, I pray thee, to the flock, and fetch me two fine kids of the goats and I will get the savory meat for thy father. And thou shalt bring the savory meat, that he may bless and eat, before thy brother shall have come from the chase, in order that thy father may bless thee. And Jacob hastened and did as his mother had commanded him. And he made the savory meat, and brought it before his father, before Esau had come from his chase. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Who art thou, my son? And he said, I am thy firstborn, Esau. I have done as thou didst order me. Now therefore rise up, I pray thee, and eat of my hunt, in order that thy soul may bless me as thou didst speak unto me. And Isaac rose up, and he ate, and he drank, and his heart was comforted. And he blessed Jacob, and Jacob went away from his father. And as soon as Isaac had blessed Jacob, and he'd gone away from him, behold, Esau came from his hunt from the field, and he also made savory meat, and brought it to his father to eat thereof, and to bless him. And Isaac said unto Esau, And who was he that has taken venison, and brought it to me before thou camest, and whom I did bless? And Esau knew that his brother Jacob had done this. And the anger of Esau was kindled against his brother Jacob, that he had acted thus toward him. And Esau said, Is he not rightly called Jacob? For he has supplanted me twice. He took away my birthright, and now he's taken away my blessing. And Esau wept greatly. And when Isaac heard the voice of his son Esau weeping, Isaac said unto Esau, What can I do, my son? Thy brother came with subtlety, and took away thy blessing. And Esau hated his brother Jacob on account of the blessing that his father had given him, and his anger was greatly roused against him. And Jacob was very much afraid of his brother Esau, and he rose up and fled to the house of Eber, the son of Shem. And he concealed himself there on account of his brother. And Jacob was sixty-three years old, when he went forth from the land of Canaan from Hebron. And Jacob was concealed in Eber's house fourteen years on account of his brother Esau. And he there continued to learn the ways of the Lord and his commandments. And when Esau saw that Jacob had fled and escaped from him, and that Jacob had cunningly obtained the blessing, then Esau grieved exceedingly, 
and he was also vexed at his father and mother. And he also rose up and took his wife and went away from his father and mother to the land of Seir, and he dwelt there. And Esau saw there a woman from amongst the daughters of Heth, whose name was Bosmath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And he took her for a wife, in addition to his first wife. And Esau called her name Ada, saying the blessing had in that time passed from him. And Esau dwelt in the land of Seir six months, without seeing his father and mother. And afterward Esau took his wives and rose up and returned to the land of Canaan. And Esau placed his two wives in his father's house in Hebron. And the wives of Esau vexed and provoked Isaac and Rebekah with their works. For they walked not in the ways of the Lord, but served their father's gods of wood and stone as their father had taught them. And they were more wicked than their father. And they went according to the evil desires of their hearts. And they sacrificed and burnt incense to the Balaam. And Isaac and Rebekah became weary of them. And Rebekah said, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are the daughters of the land, what good then is life unto me? And in those days Ada, the wife of Esau, conceived and bare him a son. And Esau called the name of the son that was born unto him Eliphaz. And Esau was sixty-five years old when she bare him. And Ishmael, the son of Abraham, died in those days, in the sixty-fourth year of the life of Jacob. And all the days that Ishmael lived were one hundred and thirty-seven years. And he died. And when Isaac heard that Ishmael was dead, he mourned for him. And Isaac lamented over him many days. And at the end of fourteen years of Jacob's residing in the house of Eber, Jacob desired to see his father and mother. And Jacob came to the house of his father and mother to Hebron. And Esau had in those days forgotten what Jacob had done to him in having taken the blessing from him in those days. And when Esau saw Jacob coming to his father and mother, he remembered what Jacob had done to him. And he was greatly incensed against him, and he sought to slay him. And Isaac, the son of Abraham, was old and advanced in days. And Esau said, Now my father's time is drawing nigh that he must die. And when he shall die, I will slay my brother Jacob. And this was told to Rebekah. And she hastened and sent and called for Jacob her son. And she said unto him, Arise, go and flee to Haran, to my brother Laban, and remain there for some time until thy brother's anger be turned from thee, and then shalt thou come back. And Isaac called unto Jacob and said unto him, Take not a wife from the daughters of Canaan. For thus did our father Abraham command us, according to the word of the Lord which he had commanded him, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, if thy children keep my covenant that I have made with thee. Then will I also perform to thy children that which I have spoken unto thee, and I will not forsake them. Now therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, to all that I shall command thee, and refrain from taking a wife from amongst the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Haran, to the house of Bethuel, thy father's mother, and take unto thee a wife from there, from the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Therefore take heed, lest thou should forget the Lord thy God and all his ways in the land to which thou goest, and shouldst get connected with the people of the land, and pursue vanity, and forsake the Lord thy God. But when thou comest to the land, serve there the Lord. Do not turn to the right or to the left from the way which I commanded thee, and which thou didst learn. And may the Almighty God grant thee favor in the sight of the people of the earth, that thou mayest take there a wife according to thy choice, one who is good and upright in the ways of the Lord. And may God give unto thee and thy seed the blessing of thy father Abraham, and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and mayest thou become a multitude of people in the land whither thou goest. And may God cause thee to return to this land, the land of thy father's dwelling, 
with children and great riches, with joy and with pleasure. And Isaac finished commanding Jacob and blessing him, and he gave him many gifts together with silver and gold, and he sent him away. And Jacob hearkened to his father and mother. He kissed them and arose and went to Padan Aram. And Jacob was seventy-seven years old when he went out from the land of Canaan, from Beersheba. And when Jacob went away to go to Haran, Esau called unto his son Eliphaz and secretly spoke unto him, saying, Now hasten, take thy sword in thy hand, and pursue Jacob, and pass before him in the road, and lurk for him, and slay him with thy sword in one of the mountains, and take all belonging to him, and come back. And Eliphaz the son of Esau was an active man, an expert with the bow as his father had taught him, and he was a noted hunter in the field, and a valiant man. And Eliphaz did as his father had commanded him, and Eliphaz was at that time thirteen years old. And Eliphaz rose up and went and took ten of his mother's brothers with him, and pursued Jacob. And he closely followed Jacob, and he lurked for him in the border of the land of Canaan, opposite to the city of Shechem. And Jacob saw Eliphaz and his men pursuing him. And Jacob stood still in the place in which he was going, in order to know what it was, for he did not know the thing. And Eliphaz drew his sword, and he went on advancing, he and his men, toward Jacob. And Jacob said unto them, What is to do with you that you have come hither? And what meaneth it that you pursue with your swords? And Eliphaz came near to Jacob, and he answered and said unto him, Thus did my father command me, and now therefore I will not deviate from the orders which my father gave me. And when Jacob saw that Esau had spoken to Eliphaz to employ force, Jacob then approached and supplicated Eliphaz and his men, saying to him, Behold all that I have, and which my father and mother gave unto me, that take unto thee and go from me, and do not slay me, and may this thing be accounted unto thee a righteousness. And the Lord caused Jacob to find favor in the sight of Eliphaz the son of Esau and his men. And they hearkened to the voice of Jacob, and they did not put him to death. And Eliphaz and his men took all belonging to Jacob, together with the silver and gold that he brought with him from Beersheba. They left him nothing. And Eliphaz and his men went away from him, and they returned to Esau to Beersheba. And they told him all that had occurred to them with Jacob and they gave him all that they'd taken from Jacob. And Esau was indignant at Eliphaz's son, and at his men that were with him, because they'd not put Jacob to death. And they answered and said unto Esau, Because Jacob supplicated us in this matter not to slay him, our pity was excited toward him, and we took all belonging to him, and brought it unto thee. And Esau took all the silver and gold which Eliphaz had taken from Jacob, and he put them by in his house. At that time, when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had commanded him, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife from amongst the daughters of Canaan, and that the daughters of Canaan were bad in the sight of Isaac and Rebekah, then he went to the house of Ishmael his uncle, and in addition to his older wives, he took Maklath, the daughter of Ishmael, the sister of Nebaioth, for a wife. Jasher chapter 30 And Jacob went forth, continuing his road to Haran. And he came as far as Mount Moriah. And he tarried there all night, near the city of Luz. And the Lord appeared there unto Jacob on that night. And he said unto him, I am the Lord God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac thy father. The land upon which thou liest I will give unto thee and thy seed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee wherever thou goest. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. I will cause all thine enemies to fall before thee. And when they shall make war with thee, they shall not prevail over thee. And I will bring thee again unto this land with joy, with children, and great riches. And Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he rejoiced greatly at the vision which he had seen. And he called the name of that place Bethel. And Jacob rose up from that place quite rejoiced. And when he walked, 
his feet felt light to him for joy. And he went from there to the land of the children of the east, and he returned to Haran, and he sat by the shepherd's well. And he there found some men going from Haran to feed their flocks. And Jacob made inquiries of them, and they said, We are from Haran. And he said unto them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And behold, his daughter Rachel is coming along to feed her father's flock. While he was yet speaking with them, Rachel, the daughter of Laban, came to feed her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, he ran and kissed her, and he lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was the son of Rebekah, her father's sister. And Rachel ran and told her father, and Jacob continued to cry, because he had nothing with him to bring to the house of Laban. And when Laban heard that his sister's son Jacob had come, he ran and kissed him and embraced him, and brought him into the house, and gave him bread, and he ate. And Jacob related to Laban what his brother Esau had done to him, and what his son Eliphaz had done to him in the road. And Jacob resided in Laban's house for one month, and Jacob ate and drank in the house of Laban. And afterward Laban said unto Jacob, Tell me what shall be thy wages, for how canst thou serve me for naught? And Laban had no sons, but only daughters, and his other wives and handmaids were still barren in those days. And these are the names of Laban's daughters, which his wife Adana had borne unto him. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored, and Jacob loved her. And Jacob said unto Laban, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel thy younger daughter. And Laban consented to this, and Jacob served Laban seven years for his daughter Rachel. And in the second year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, which is the seventy-ninth year of the life of Jacob, in that year died Eber, the son of Shem. He was four hundred and sixty-four years old at his death. And when Jacob heard that Eber was dead, he grieved exceedingly, and he lamented and mourned over him many days. And in the third year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, Bosmath, the daughter of Ishmael, the wife of Esau, bare unto him a son, and Esau called his name Ruel. And in the fourth year of Jacob's residence in the house of Laban, the Lord visited Laban and remembered him on account of Jacob, and sons were born unto him. And his firstborn was Beor, his second was Alib, and the third was Korash. And the Lord gave Laban riches and honor, sons and daughters, and the man increased greatly on account of Jacob. And Jacob in those days served Laban in all manner of work, in the house and in the field, and the blessing of the Lord was in all that belonged to Laban, in the house and in the field. And in the fifth year died Jehudith, the daughter of Beri, the wife of Esau in the land of Canaan. And she had no sons, but daughters only. And these are the names of her daughters which she bare to Esau. The name of the elder was Marzith, and the name of the younger was Puith. And when Jehudith died, Esau rose up and went to Seir to hunt in the field, as usual. And Esau dwelt in the land of Seir for a long time. And in the sixth year Esau took for a wife, in addition to his other wives, Alibema, the daughter of Zebion the Hevite. And Esau brought her to the land of Canaan. And Alibema conceived and bare Esau three sons, Yeosh, Yeelan, and Korah. And in those days in the land of Canaan, there was a quarrel between the herdsmen of Esau and the herdsmen of the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. For Esau's cattle and goods were too abundant for him to remain in the land of Canaan, in his father's house. And the land of Canaan could not bear him on account of his cattle. 
And when Esau saw that his quarreling increased with the inhabitants of the land of Canaan, he rose up and took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all belonging to him and the cattle which he possessed and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan. And he went away from the inhabitants of the land to the land of Seir. And Esau and all belonging to him dwelt in the land of Seir. But from time to time, Esau would go and see his father and mother in the land of Canaan. And Esau intermarried with the Horites, and he gave his daughters to the sons of Seir the Horite. And he gave his elder daughter, Marzith, to Ana, the son of Zebion, his wife's brother. And Puith he gave to Azar, the son of Bilhan the Horite. And Esau dwelt in the mountain, he and his children. And they were fruitful and multiplied. Jasher chapter 31 And in the seventh year, Jacob's service which he served, Laban, was completed. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for the days of my service are fulfilled. And Laban did so. And Laban and Jacob assembled all the people of that place, and they made a feast. And in the evening Laban came to the house, and afterward Jacob came there with the people of the feast. And Laban extinguished all the lights that were there in the house. And Jacob said unto Laban, Wherefore dost thou do this thing unto us? And Laban answered, Such is our custom to act in this land. And afterward Laban took his daughter Leah, and he brought her to Jacob. And he came to her, and Jacob did not know that she was Leah. And Laban gave his daughter Leah his maid Zilpah for a handmaid. And all the people of the feast knew what Laban had done to Jacob, but they did not tell the thing to Jacob. And all the neighbors came that night to Jacob's house, and they ate and drank and rejoiced, and played before Leah upon timbrels and with dances, and they responded before Jacob, Helia, Helia. And Jacob heard their words, but did not understand their meaning, for he thought such might be their custom in this land. And the neighbors spoke these words before Jacob during the night, and all the lights that were in the house Laban had that night extinguished. And in the morning, when daylight appeared, Jacob turned to his wife, and he saw, and behold, it was Leah that had been lying in his bosom. And Jacob said, Behold, now I know what the neighbors said last night, Helia. They said, and I knew it not. And Jacob called unto Laban and said unto him, What is this that thou didst unto me? Surely I serve for Rachel, and why didst thou deceive me, and didst give me Leah? And Laban answered Jacob, saying, not so is it done in our place to give the younger before the elder. Now, therefore, if thou desirest to take a sister likewise, take her unto thee for the service which thou wilt serve me for another seven years. And Jacob did so. And he also took Rachel for a wife. And he served Laban seven years more. And Jacob also came to Rachel and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And Laban gave his maid Bilhah for a handmaid. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, the Lord opened her womb, and she conceived and bare Jacob four sons in those days. And these are their names, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. And she afterward left bearing. And at that time, Rachel was barren, and she had no offspring. And Rachel envied her sister Leah. And when Rachel saw that she bare no children to Jacob, she took her handmaid Bilhah, and she bare Jacob two sons, Dan and Naphtali. And when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she also took her handmaid Zilpah, and she gave her to Jacob for a wife. And Jacob also came to Zilpah. And she also bare Jacob two sons, Gad and Asher. And Leah again conceived, 
and bare Jacob in those days two sons and one daughter. And these are their names, Issachar, Zebulun, and their sister Dinah. And Rachel was still barren in those days. And Rachel prayed unto the Lord at that time, and she said, O Lord God, remember me, and visit me, I beseech thee. For now my husband will cast me off, for I have borne him no children. Now, O Lord God, hear my supplication before thee, and see my affliction, and give me children like one of the handmaids, that I may no more bear my reproach. And God heard her, and opened her womb. And Rachel conceived and bare a son, and she said, The Lord has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, saying, May the Lord add to me another son. And Jacob was ninety-one years old when she bare him. At that time Jacob's mother, Rebekah, sent her nurse Deborah, the daughter of Uz, and two of Isaac's servants unto Jacob. And they came to Jacob to Haran, and they said unto him, Rebekah has sent us to thee, that thou shalt return to thy father's house, to the land of Canaan. And Jacob hearkened unto them in this which his mother had spoken. At that time the other seven years which Jacob served Laban for Rachel were completed. And it was at the end of fourteen years that he had dwelt in Haran, that Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wives, and send me away, that I may go to my land. For behold, my mother did send unto me from the land at Canaan, that I should return to my father's house. And Laban said unto him, Not so, I pray thee. If I have found favor in thy sight, do not leave me. Appoint me thy wages, and I will give them, and remain with me. And Jacob said unto him, This is what thou shalt give me for wages, that I shall this day pass through all thy flock, and take away from them every lamb that is speckled and spotted, and such as are brown among the sheep and amongst the goats. And if thou wilt do this thing for me, I will return and feed thy flock, and keep them as at first. And Laban did so. And Laban removed from his flock all that Jacob had said, and gave them to him. And Jacob placed all that he had removed from Laban's flock in the hands of his sons. And Jacob was feeding the remainder of Laban's flock. And when the servants of Isaac, which he had sent unto Jacob, saw that Jacob would not then return with them to the land of Canaan to his father, they then went away from him, and they returned home to the land of Canaan. And Deborah remained with Jacob in Haran, and she did not return with the servants of Isaac to the land of Canaan. And Deborah resided with Jacob's wives and children in Haran. And Jacob served Laban six years longer. And when the sheep brought forth, Jacob removed from them such as were speckled and spotted, as he had determined with Laban. And Jacob did so at Laban's for six years. And the man increased abundantly, and he had cattle and maidservants and menservants, camels and asses. And Jacob had two hundred drove of cattle, and his cattle were of large size and of beautiful appearance, and were very productive. And all the families of the sons of men desired to get some of the cattle of Jacob, for they were exceedingly prosperous. And many of the sons of men came to procure some of Jacob's flock. And Jacob gave them a sheep for a manservant, or a maidservant, or for an ass, or a camel, or whatever Jacob desired from them, they gave him. And Jacob obtained riches and honor and possessions by means of these transactions with the sons of men. And the children of Laban envied him of this honor. And in the course of time he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's has he acquired all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and of his children, and behold, it was not toward him in those days as it had been before. And the Lord appeared to Jacob at the expiration of six years, and said unto him, 
Arise, go forth out of this land, and return to the land of thy birthplace, and I will be with thee. And Jacob rose up at that time, and he mounted his children and wives and all belonging to him upon camels, and he went forth to go to the land of Canaan to his father. And Laban did not know that Jacob had gone from him, for Laban had been that day sheep-sharing, and Rachel stole her father's images, and she took them, and she concealed them upon the camel upon which she sat, and she went on. And this is the manner of the images, in taking a man who is the firstborn, and slaying him, and taking the hair off his head, and taking salt, and salting the head, and anointing it in oil, then taking a small tablet of copper or a tablet of gold and writing the name upon it and placing the tablet under his tongue and taking the head with the tablet under the tongue and putting it in the house and lighting up lights before it and bowing down to it. And at the time when they bow down to it, it speaketh to them in all matters that they ask of it through the power of the name which is written in it. And some will make them in the figures of men, of gold and silver, and go to them in times known to them. And the figures receive the influence of the stars and tell them future things. And in this manner were the images which Rachel stole from her father. And Rachel stole these images which were her father's, in order that Laban might not know through them where Jacob had gone. And Laban came home, and he asked concerning Jacob and his household and he was not to be found. And Laban sought his images to know where Jacob had gone, and could not find them. And he went to some other images, and he inquired of them, and they told him that Jacob had fled from him to his fathers, to the land of Canaan. And Laban then rose up, and he took his brothers and all his servants, and he went forth and pursued Jacob, and he overtook him in Mount Gilead. And Laban said unto Jacob, what is this thou hast done to me to flee and deceive me and lead my daughters and their children as captives taken by the sword? And thou didst not suffer me to kiss them and send them away with joy. And thou didst steal my gods and didst go away. And Jacob answered Laban, saying, Because I was afraid, lest thou wouldst take thy daughters by force from me. And now, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, he shall die. And Laban searched for the images, and he examined in all Jacob's tents and furniture, but could not find them. And Laban said unto Jacob, We will make a covenant together, and it shall be a testimony between me and thee. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or shalt take other wives beside my daughters, even God shall be a witness between me and thee in this matter. And they took stones and made a heap. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee. Therefore he called the name thereof Gilead. And Jacob and Laban offered sacrifice upon the mount, and they ate there by the heap, and they tarried in the mount all night. And Laban rose up early in the morning, and he wept with his daughters, and he kissed them, and he returned to his place. And he hastened and sent off his son Beor, who was seventeen years old, with Abikoroff, the son of Uz, the son of Nahor, and with them were ten men. And they hastened and went and passed on the road before Jacob. And they came by another road to the land of Seir. And they came unto Esau and said unto him, Thus saith thy brother and relative, thy mother's brother Laban, the son of Bethuel, saying, Hast thou heard what Jacob thy brother has done unto me, who first came to me naked and bare, and I went to meet him, and brought him to my house with honour, and I made him great, and I gave him my two daughters for wives, and also two of my maids? And God blessed him on my account, and he increased abundantly, and had sons, daughters, and maidservants. He has also an immense stock of flocks and herds, camels and asses, also silver and gold in abundance. And when he saw that his wealth increased, he left me, whilst I went to shear my sheep, 
and he rose up and fled in secrecy. And he lifted his wives and children upon camels, and he led away all his cattle and property which he acquired in my land. And he lifted up his countenance to go to his father Isaac, to the land of Canaan. And he did not suffer me to kiss my daughters and their children, and he led my daughters as captives taken by the sword, and he also stole my gods, and he fled. And now I have left him in the mountain of the brook of Jabok, him and all belonging to him. He lacketh nothing. If it be thy wish to go to him, go then, and there wilt thou find him, and thou canst do unto him as thy soul desireth. And Laban's messengers came and told Esau all these things. And Esau heard all the words of Laban's messengers, and his anger was greatly kindled against Jacob. And he remembered his hatred, and his anger burned within him. And Esau hastened and took his children and servants and the souls of his household, being sixty men. And he went and assembled all the children of Seir the Horite and their people, being three hundred and forty men, and took all this number of four hundred men with drawn swords. And he went unto Jacob to smite him. And Esau divided this number into several parts. And he took the sixty men of his children and servants and the souls of his household as one head. And he gave them in care of Eliphaz his eldest son. And the remaining heads he gave to the care of the six sons of Seir the Horite. And he placed every man over his generations and children. And the whole of this camp went as it was. And Esau went amongst them toward Jacob, and he conducted them with speed. And Laban's messengers departed from Esau and went to the land of Canaan. And they came to the house of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. And they told her, saying, Behold, thy son Esau has gone against his brother Jacob with four hundred men, for he heard that he was coming, and he's gone to make war with him, and to smite him, and to take all that he has. And Rebekah hastened, and sent seventy-two men from the servants of Isaac to meet Jacob on the road. For she said, Peradventure Esau may make war in the road when he meets him. And these messengers went on the road to meet Jacob. And they met him in the road of the brook, on the opposite side of the brook Jabok. And Jacob said when he saw them, This camp is destined to me from God. And Jacob called the name of that place Machnaim. And Jacob knew all his father's people. And he kissed them, and embraced them, and came with them. And Jacob asked them concerning his father and mother, and they said, They were well. And these messengers said unto Jacob, Rebekah thy mother has sent us to thee, saying, I have heard, my son, that thy brother Esau has gone forth against thee on the road with men from the children of Seir the Horite. And therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, and see with thy counsel what thou wilt do. And when he cometh up to thee, supplicate him, and do not speak rashly to him, and give him a present from what thou possessest, and from what God has favoured thee with. And when he asketh thee concerning thy affairs, conceal nothing from him. Perhaps he may turn from his anger against thee, and thou wilt thereby save thy soul, thou and all belonging to thee. For it is thy duty to honour him, for he is thy elder brother. And when Jacob heard the words of his mother which the messengers had spoken to him, Jacob lifted up his voice and wept bitterly and did as his mother then commanded him. Jasher chapter 32 And at that time Jacob sent messengers to his brother Esau toward the land of Seir, and he spoke to him words of supplication. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye say to my lord, to Esau, Thus saith thy brother Jacob, Let not my lord imagine, that my father's blessings with which he did bless me has proved beneficial to me. For I have been these twenty years with Laban, and he deceived me and changed my wages ten times, as it has already been told unto my Lord. And I served him in his house very laboriously, and God afterwards saw my affliction, my labor, and the work of my hands, 
and he caused me to find grace and favor in his sight. And I afterward, through God's great mercy and kindness, required oxen and asses and cattle and men servants and maid servants. And now I am coming to my land and my home to my father and mother who are in the land of Canaan. And I have sent to let my Lord know all this in order to find favor in sight of my Lord, so that he may not imagine that I have of myself obtained wealth, or that the blessing with which my father blessed me has benefited me. And those messengers went to Esau, and found him on the borders of the land of Edom, going toward Jacob, and four hundred men of the children of Seir the Horite were standing with drawn swords. And the messengers of Jacob told Esau all the words that Jacob had spoken to them concerning Esau. And Esau answered them with pride and contempt, and said unto them, Surely I have heard, and truly it has been told unto me, what Jacob has done to Laban who exalted him in his house, gave him daughters for wives, and he begat sons and daughters, and abundantly increased in wealth and riches in Laban's house through his means. And when he saw that his wealth was abundant, and his riches great, he fled with all belonging to him from Laban's house, and he led Laban's daughters away from the face of their father as captives taken by the sword, without telling him of it. And not only to Laban has Jacob done thus, but also unto me has he done so, and has twice supplanted me. And shall I be silent? Now therefore I have this day come with my camps to meet him, and I will do unto him according to the desire of my heart. And the messengers returned, and came to Jacob, and said unto him, We came to thy brother, to Esau, and we told him all thy words, and thus has he answered us. And behold, he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men. Now then know and see what thou shalt do, and pray before God to deliver thee from him. And when he heard the words of his brother which he had spoken to the messengers of Jacob, Jacob was greatly afraid, and he was distressed. And Jacob prayed to the Lord his God, and he said, O Lord God of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, thou didst say unto me when I went away from my father's house, saying, I am the Lord God of thy father and the God of Isaac. Unto thee do I give this land and thy seed after thee. And I will make thy seed as the stars of heaven, and thou shalt spread forth to the four sides of heaven. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And thou didst establish thy words, and didst give unto me riches and children and cattle, as the utmost wishes of my heart didst thou give unto thy servant. Thou didst give unto me all that I asked from thee, so that I lacked nothing. And thou didst afterward say unto me, Return to thy parents and to thy birthplace, and I will still do well with thee. And now that I have come, and thou didst deliver me from Laban, I shall fall in the hands of Esau, who will slay me, yea, together with the mothers of my children. Now therefore, O Lord God, deliver me, I pray thee, and also from the hands of my brother Esau, for I am greatly afraid of him. And if there is no righteousness in me, do it for the sake of Abraham and my father Isaac. For I know that through kindness and mercy have I acquired this wealth. Now therefore I beseech thee to deliver me this day with thy kindness, and to answer me. And Jacob ceased praying to the Lord. And he divided the people that were with him with the flocks and cattle, into two camps. And he gave the half to the care of Damasak, the son of Eliezer, Abraham's servant, for a camp with his children. And the other half he gave to the care of his brother, Elianus, the son of Eliezer, to be for a camp with his children. And he commanded them, saying, Keep yourselves at a distance with your camps, and do not come too near each other. And if Esau come to one camp, and slay it, the other camp at a distance from it, will escape him. And Jacob tarried there that night, and during the whole night he gave his servants instructions concerning the forces and his children. And the Lord heard the prayer of Jacob on that day, and the Lord then delivered Jacob from the hands of his brother Esau. And the Lord sent three angels of the angels of heaven, and they went before Esau and came to him. And these angels appeared unto Esau and his people as two thousand men 
riding upon horses furnished with all sorts of war instruments, and they appeared in the sight of Esau and all his men to be divided into four camps with four chiefs to them. And one camp went on, and they found Esau coming with four hundred men toward his brother Jacob. And this camp ran toward Esau and his people and terrified them. And Esau fell off the horse in alarm, and all his men separated from him in that place, for they were greatly afraid. And the whole of the camp shouted after them when they fled from Esau. And all the warlike men answered, saying, Surely we are the servants of Jacob, who is the servant of God. And who then can stand against us? And Esau said unto them, O oh, then, my lord and brother Jacob is your lord, whom I have not seen for these twenty years. And now that I have this day come to see him, do you treat me in this manner? And the angels answered him, saying, As the Lord liveth, were not Jacob of whom thou speakest thy brother, we had not let one remaining from thee and thy people. But only on account of Jacob we will do nothing to them. And this camp passed from Esau and his men, and it went away. And Esau and his men had gone from them about a league when the second camp came toward him with all sorts of weapons. And they also did unto Esau and his men as the first camp had done to them. And when they had left it to go on, behold, the third camp came toward him, and they were all terrified. And Esau fell off the horse, and the whole camp cried out and said, Surely we are the servants of Jacob, who is the servant of God and who can stand against us? And Esau again answered them, saying, O oh, then, Jacob my lord, and your lord is my brother, and for twenty years I have not seen his countenance, and hearing this day that he was coming, I went this day to meet him, and do you treat me in this manner? And they answered him, and said unto him, As the Lord liveth, were not Jacob thy brother, as thou didst say, we had not left a remnant from thee and thy men. But on account of Jacob, of whom thou speakest, being thy brother, we will not meddle with thee or thy men. And the third camp also passed from them. And he still continued his road with his men toward Jacob, when the fourth camp came toward him. And they also did unto him and his men as the others had done. And when Esau beheld the evil which the four angels had done to him and to his men, he became greatly afraid of his brother Jacob and he went to meet him in peace. And Esau concealed his hatred against Jacob, because he was afraid of his life on the count of his brother Jacob, and because he imagined that the four camps that he had lighted upon were Jacob's servants. And Jacob tarried that night with his servants in their camps, and he resolved with his servants to give unto Esau a present from all that he had with him. And Jacob tarried that night with his servants in their camps. And he resolved with his servants to give unto Esau a present from all that he had with him, and from all his property. And Joseph rose up in the morning, he and his men, and they chose from amongst the cattle a present for Esau. And this is the amount of the present which Jacob chose from his flock to give unto his brother Esau. And he selected two hundred and forty head from the flocks, and he selected from the camels and asses thirty each, and of the herds he chose fifty kine. And he put them all in ten droves, and he placed each sort by itself. And he delivered them into the hands of ten of his servants, each drove by itself. And he commanded them, and said unto them, Keep yourselves at a distance from each other, and put a space between the droves. And when Esau and those who are with him shall meet you and ask you, saying, Whose are you, and whither do you go? And to whom belongeth all this before you? You shall say unto them, we are the servants of Jacob, and we come to meet Esau in peace. And behold, Jacob cometh behind us, and that which is before us is a present sent from Jacob to his brother Esau. And if they shall say unto you, Why doth he delay behind you from coming to meet his brother and to see his face? Then you shall say unto them, Surely he cometh joyfully behind us to meet his brother. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth to him, and after this I will see his face, peradventure he will accept of me. So the whole present passed on in the hands of his servants, and went before him on that day. And he lodged that night with his camps by the border of the brook of Jabuk, and he rose up in the midst of the night, 
And he took his wives and his maidservants and all belonging to him, and he that night passed them over the ford Jabok. And when he passed all belonging to him over the brook, Jacob was left by himself, and a man met him. And he wrestled with him that night until the breaking of the day. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint through wrestling with him. And at the break of day, the man left Jacob there, and he blessed him and went away. And Jacob passed the brook at the break of day, and he halted upon his thigh. And the sun rose upon him when he passed the brook, and he came up to the place of his cattle and children. And they went on till midday, and whilst they were going, the present was passing on before them. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, Esau was at a distance, coming along with many men, about four hundred. And Jacob was greatly afraid of his brother. And Jacob hastened and divided his children unto his wives and his handmaids. And his daughter Dina he put in a chest and delivered her into the hands of his servants. And he passed before his children and wives to meet his brother. And he bowed down to the ground. Yea, he bowed down seven times until he approached his brother. And God caused Jacob to find grace and favor in the sight of Esau and his men. For God had heard the prayer of Jacob. And the fear of Jacob and his terror fell upon his brother Esau. For Esau was greatly afraid of Jacob for what the angels of God had done to Esau. And Esau's anger against Jacob was turned into kindness. And when Esau saw Jacob running toward him, he also ran toward him, and he embraced him, and he fell upon his neck, and they kissed, and they wept. And God put fear and kindness toward Jacob in the hearts of the men that came with Esau. And they also kissed Jacob and embraced him. And also Eliphaz, the son of Esau, with his four brothers, sons of Esau, wept with Jacob, and they kissed him and embraced him, for the fear of Jacob had fallen upon them all. And Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women with their offspring, the children of Jacob, walking behind Jacob and bowing along the road to Esau. And Esau said unto Jacob, Who are these with thee, my brother? Are they thy children or thy servants? And Jacob answered Esau and said, They are my children, which God hath graciously given to thy servant. And whilst Jacob was speaking to Esau and his men, Esau beheld the whole camp, and he said unto Jacob, Whence didst thou get the whole of the camp that I met yesternight? And Jacob said, To find favor in the sight of my Lord. It is that which God graciously gave to thy servant. And the present came before Esau, and Jacob pressed Esau, saying, Take, I pray thee, the present that I have brought to my Lord. And Esau said, Wherefore is this my purpose? Keep that which thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, It is incumbent upon me to give all this, since I have seen thy face, that thou still livest in peace. And Esau refused to take the present. And Jacob said unto him, I beseech thee, my lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand, for I have therefore seen thy face as though I had seen a godlike face, because thou wast pleased with me. And Esau took the present. And Jacob also gave unto Esau silver and gold and bdellium, for he pressed him so much that he took them. And Esau divided the cattle that were in the camp, and he gave the half to the men who had come with him, for they had come on hire, and the other half he delivered unto the hands of his children. And the silver and gold and bdellium he gave in the hands of Eliphaz his eldest son. And Esau said unto Jacob, Let us remain with thee and we will go slowly along with thee until thou comest to my place with me, that we may dwell there together. And Jacob answered his brother and said, I would do as my Lord speaketh unto me, but my Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks and herds with their young who are with me go but slowly, for if they went swiftly they would all die, for thou knowest their burdens and their fatigue. Therefore let my Lord pass on before his servant and I will go on slowly for the sake of the children and the flock, until I come to my Lord's place, to Seir. And Esau said unto Jacob, I will place with thee some of the people that are with me to take care of thee in the road, and to bear thy fatigue and burden. 
And he said, What needeth it, my lord, if I may find grace in thy sight? Behold, I will come unto thee to Seir, to dwell there together as thou hast spoken. Go thou then with thy people, for I will follow thee. And Jacob said this to Esau in order to remove Esau and his men from him, so that Jacob might afterward go to his father's house, to the land of Canaan. And Esau hearkened to the voice of Jacob. And Esau returned with the four hundred men that were with him on their road to Seir. And Jacob and all belonging to him went that day as far as the extremity of the land of Canaan in its borders. And he remained there for some time. Jasher chapter 33. And in some time after, Jacob went away from the borders of the land, and he came to the land of Shalem, that is the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, and he rested in front of the city. And he bought a parcel of the field which was there, from the children of Hamor, the people of the land, for five shekels. And Jacob there built himself a house, and he pitched his tent there, and he made booths for his cattle. Therefore he called the name of that place Succoth. And Jacob remained in Succoth a year and six months. At that time some of the women of the inhabitants of the land went to the city of Shechem to dance and rejoice with the daughters of the people of the city. And when they went forth, then Rachel and Leah, the wives of Jacob, with their families, also went to behold the rejoicing of the daughters of the city. And Dina, the daughter of Jacob, also went along with them, and saw the daughters of the city. And they remained there before these daughters, whilst all the people of the city were standing by them to behold their rejoicings. And all the great people of the city were there. And Shechem, the son of Hamor, the prince of the land, was also standing there to see them. And Shechem beheld Dina, the daughter of Jacob, sitting with her mother before the daughters of the city. And the damsel pleased him greatly. And he there asked his friends and his people, saying, Whose daughter is that, sitting amongst the women who I do not know in this city? And they said unto him, Surely this is the daughter of Jacob, the son of Isaac the Hebrew, who has dwelt in this city for some time. And when it was reported that the daughters of the land were going forth to rejoice, she went with her mother and maid servants to sit amongst them, as thou seest. And Shechem beheld Dina, the daughter of Jacob. And when he looked at her, his soul became fixed upon Dina. And he sent, and had her taken by force. And Dina came to the house of Shechem, and he seized her forcibly, and lay with her, and humbled her. And he loved her exceedingly, and placed her in his house. And they came, and told the thing unto Jacob. And when Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dina, Jacob sent twelve of his servants to fetch Dina from the house of Shechem, and they went and came to the house of Shechem to take away Dina from there. And when they came, Shechem went out to them with his men and drove them from his house, and he would not suffer them to come before Dina. But Shechem was sitting with Dina, kissing and embracing her before their eyes. And the servants of Jacob came back and told him, saying, When we came, he and his men drove us away, and thus did Shechem do unto Dina before our eyes. And Jacob knew, moreover, that Shechem had defiled his daughter, but he said nothing. And his sons were feeding his cattle in the field, and Jacob remained silent till their return. And before his sons came home, Jacob sent two maidens from his servants' daughters to take care of Dina in the house of Shechem, and to remain with her. And Shechem sent three of his friends to his father Hamor, the son of Chedekim, the son of Pered, saying, Give me this damsel for a wife. And Hamor, the son of Chedekim the Hivite, came to the house of Shechem his son, and he sat before him. And Hamor said unto his son, Shechem, is there no woman amongst the daughters of thy people, that thou wilt take an Hebrew woman who is not of thy people? And Shechem said to him, Her only must thou get for me, for she is delightful in my sight. And Hamor did according to the word of his son, for he was greatly beloved by him. And Hamor went forth to Jacob to commune with him concerning this matter. And when he had gone from the house of his son Shechem, before he came to Jacob to speak unto him, behold, the sons of Jacob had come from the field as soon as they heard the thing that Shechem the son of Hamor had done. And the men 
were very much grieved concerning their sister, and they all came home fired with anger before the time of gathering in their cattle. And they came and sat before their father, and they spoke unto him kindled with wrath, saying, Surely death is due to this man and to his household, because the Lord God of the whole earth commanded Noah and his children that man shall never rob nor commit adultery. Now behold, Shechem has both ravaged and committed fornication with our sister, and not one of all the people of the city spoke a word to him. Surely thou knowest and understandest that the judgment of death is due to Shechem and to his father, and to the whole city on account of the thing which he has done. And whilst they were speaking before their father in this matter, behold, Hamor, the father of Shechem, came to speak to Jacob the words of his son concerning Dina. And he sat before Jacob and before his sons. And Hamor spoke unto them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give her unto him for a wife, and intermarry with us. Give us your daughters, and we will give you our daughters. And you shall dwell with us in our land, and we will be as one people in the land. For our land is very extensive. So dwell ye, and trade therein, and get possessions in it, and do therein as you desire. And no one shall prevent you by saying a word to you. And Hamor ceased speaking unto Jacob and his sons. And behold, Shechem his son had come after him, and he sat before them. And Shechem spoke before Jacob and his sons, saying, May I find favor in your sight, that you will give me your daughter, and whatever you say unto me, that will I do for her. Ask me for abundance of dowry and gift, and I will give it, and whatever you shall say unto me, that will I do. And whoever he be that will rebel against your orders, he shall die. Only give me the damsel for a wife. And Simeon and Levi answered Hamor and Shechem his son, deceitfully, saying, all you have spoken unto us we will do for you. And behold, our sister is in your house, but keep away from her until we send to our father Isaac concerning this matter, for we can do nothing without his consent. For he knoweth the ways of our father Abraham, and whatever he saith unto us we will tell you. We will conceal nothing from you. And Simeon and Levi spoke this unto Shechem and his father in order to find a pretext and to seek counsel what was to be done to Shechem and to his city in this matter. And when Shechem and his father heard the words of Simeon and Levi, it seemed good in their sight. And Shechem and his father came forth to go home. And when they had gone, the sons of Jacob said unto their father, saying, Behold, we know that death is due to these wicked ones and to their city, because they transgress that which God had commanded unto Noah and his children and his seed after them and also because Shechem did this thing to our sister Dina in defiling her, for such vileness shall never be done amongst us. Now therefore know and see what you will do, and seek counsel and pretext what is to be done to them, in order to kill all the inhabitants of this city. And Simeon said to them, Here is a proper advice for you. Tell them to circumcise every male amongst them as we are circumcised, and if they do not wish to do this, we shall take our daughter from them and go away. And if they consent to do this, and will do it, then when they are sunk down with pain, we will attack them with our swords, as upon one who is quiet and peaceable, and we will slay every male person amongst them. And Simeon's advice pleased them. And Simeon and Levi resolved to do unto them as it was proposed. And on the next morning Shechem and Hamor his father came again unto Jacob and his sons to speak concerning Dina, and to hear what answer the sons of Jacob would give to their words. And the sons of Jacob spoke deceitfully to them, saying, We told our father Isaac all your words, and your words pleased him. But he spoke unto us, saying, Thus did Abraham his father command him from God the Lord of the whole earth, that any man who is not of his descendants that should wish to take one of his daughters shall cause every male belonging to him to be circumcised, as we are circumcised, and then we may give him our daughter for a wife. Now we have made known to you all our ways that our father spoke unto us, for we cannot do this of which you spoke unto us to give our daughter to an uncircumcised man, for it is a disgrace to us. And herein will we consent to you to give you our daughter 
and we will also take unto ourselves your daughters, and will dwell amongst you and be one people as you have spoken, if you will hearken to us and consent to be like us, to circumcise every male belonging to you, as we are circumcised. And if you will not hearken unto us, to have every male circumcised as we are circumcised, as we have commanded, then we will come to you and take our daughter from you and go away. And Shechem and his father Hamor heard the words of the sons of Jacob, and the thing pleased them exceedingly. And Shechem and his father Hamor hastened to do the wishes of the sons of Jacob, for Shechem was very fond of Dina, and his soul was riveted to her. And Shechem and his father Hamor hastened to the gate of the city, and they assembled all the men of their city, and spoke unto them the words of the sons of Jacob, saying, We came to these men, the sons of Jacob, and we spoke unto them concerning their daughter, and these men will consent to do according to our wishes, and behold, our land is of great extent for them, and they will dwell in it and trade in it, and we shall be one people. We will take their daughters, and our daughters we will give unto them for wives. But only on this condition will these men consent to do this thing, that every male amongst us be circumcised as they are circumcised, as their God commanded them. And when we shall have done according to their instructions to be circumcised, then will they dwell amongst us together with their cattle and possessions, and we shall be as one people with them. And when all the men of the city heard the words of Shechem and his father Hamor, then all the people of their city were agreeable to this proposal, and they obeyed to be circumcised. For Shechem and his father Hamor were greatly esteemed by them, being princes of the land. And on the next day, Shechem and Hamor his father rose up early in the morning, and they assembled all the men of their city into the middle of the city, and they called for the sons of Jacob, who circumcised every male belonging to them on that day and the next. And they circumcised Shechem and Hamor his father and the five brothers of Shechem. And then every one rose up and went home. For this thing was from the Lord against the city of Shechem. And from the Lord was Simeon's counsel in this matter, in order that the Lord might deliver the city of Shechem into the hands of Jacob's two sons. Jasher chapter 34 And the number of all the males that were circumcised was six hundred and forty-five men and two hundred and forty-six children. But Jedekim, son of Pered, the father of Hamor, and his six brothers, would not listen unto Shechem and his father Hamor, and they would not be circumcised. For the proposal of the sons of Jacob was loathsome in their sight. And their anger was greatly roused at this, that the people of the city had not hearkened to them. And in the evening of the second day, they found eight small children who had not been circumcised, for their mothers had concealed them from Shechem and his father Hamor, and from the men of the city. And Shechem and his father sent to have them brought before them to be circumcised. When Jedekim and his six brothers sprang at them with their swords and sought to slay them, and they sought to slay also Shechem and his father Hamor, and they sought to slay Dina with them on account of this matter. And they said unto them, What is this thing that you have done? Are there no women amongst the daughters of your brethren the Canaanites, that you wish to take unto yourselves daughters of the Hebrews, whom ye knew not before, and will do this act which your fathers never commanded you? Do you imagine that you will succeed through this act which you have done? And what will you answer in this affair to your brethren the Canaanites, who will come tomorrow and ask you concerning this thing? And if your act shall not appear just and good in their sight, what will you do for your lives, and me for our lives, in your not having hearkened to our voices? And if the inhabitants of the land, and all your brethren the children of Ham, shall hear of your act, saying, On account of a Hebrew woman, did Shechem and Hamor his father and all the inhabitants of their city do that with which they had been unacquainted, and which their ancestors never commanded them? Where then will you fly, or where conceal your shame all your days before your brethren, the inhabitants of the land of Canaan? Now therefore, we cannot bear up against this thing which you have done, neither can we burdened with this yoke upon us, 
which our ancestors did not command us. Behold, tomorrow we will go and assemble all our brethren, the Canaanitish brethren who dwell in the land, and we will all come and smite you and all those who trust in you, that there shall not be a remnant left from you or them. And when Hamor and his son Shechem and all the people of the city heard the words of Chedekim and his brothers, they were terribly afraid of their lives at their words, and they repented of what they had done. And Shechem and his father Hamor answered their father Chedekim and his brethren, and they said unto them, All the words which you spoke unto us are true. Now do not say, nor imagine in your hearts, that on account of the love of the Hebrews we did this thing that our ancestors did not command us. But because we saw that it was not their intention and desire to accede to our wishes concerning their daughter as to our taking her, except on this condition. So we hearkened to their voices and did this act which you saw in order to obtain our desire from them. And when we shall have obtained our request from them, we will then return to them and do unto them that which you say unto us. We beseech you then to wait and tarry until our flesh shall be healed and we again become strong, and we will then go together against them and do unto them that which is in your hearts and in ours. And Dina, the daughter of Jacob, heard all these words which Jedekim and his brothers had spoken, and what Hamor and his son Shechem and the people of their city had answered them. And she hastened and sent one of her maidens that her father had sent to take care of her in the house of Shechem, to Jacob her father and to her brethren, saying, Thus did Jedekim and his brothers advise concerning you, and thus did Hamor and Shechem and the people of the city answer them. And when Jacob heard these words, he was filled with wrath, and he was indignant at them, and his anger was kindled against them. And Simeon and Levi swore and said, As the Lord liveth, the God of the whole earth, by this time tomorrow there shall not be a remnant left in the whole city. And twenty young men had concealed themselves who were not circumcised. And these young men fought against Simeon and Levi. And Simeon and Levi killed eighteen of them. And two fled from them and escaped to some lime pits that were in the city. And Simeon and Levi sought for them but could not find them. And Simeon and Levi continued to go about in the city, and they killed all the people of the city at the edge of the sword, and they left none remaining. And there was a great consternation in the midst of the city, and the cry of the people of the city ascended to heaven, and all the women and children cried aloud, and Simeon and Levi slew all the city. They left not a male remaining in the whole city. And Simeon and Levi slew all the city. They left not a male remaining in the whole city. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son at the edge of the sword. And they brought away Dina from the house of Shechem. And they went from there. And the sons of Jacob went and returned and came upon the slain and spoiled all their property which was in the city and the field. And whilst they were taking the spoil, three hundred men stood up and threw dust at them, and struck them with stones, when Simeon turned to them, and he slew them all with the edge of the sword. And Simeon turned before Levi, and came into the city. And they took away their sheep, and their oxen, and their cattle, and also the remainder of the women and little ones, and they led all these away. And they opened a gate, and went out and came to their father Jacob with vigor. And when Jacob saw all that they'd done to the city, and saw the spoil that they took from them, Jacob was very angry at them. And Jacob said unto them, What is this that you've done to me? Behold, I obtained rest among the Canaanitish inhabitants of the land, and none of them meddled with me. And now you've done to make me obnoxious to the inhabitants of the land, amongst the Canaanites and the Parasites, and I am but of a small number. 
and they will all assemble against me and slay me when they hear of your work with their brethren, and I and my household will be destroyed. And Simeon and Levi and all their brothers with them answered their father Jacob and said unto him, Behold, we live in the land, and shall Shechem do this to our sister? Why art thou silent at all that Shechem has done, and shall deal with our sister as with a harlot in the streets? And the number of women whom Simeon and Levi took captives from the city of Shechem, whom they did not slay, was eighty-five who had not known man. And amongst them was a young damsel of beautiful appearance and well-favoured, whose name was Buna, and Simeon took her for a wife. And the number of the males which they took captives and did not slay was forty-seven men, and the rest they slew. And all the young men and women that Simeon and Levi had taken captives from the city of Shechem were servants to the sons of Jacob and to their children after them until the day of the sons of Jacob going forth from the land of Egypt. And when Simeon and Levi had gone forth from the city, the two young men that were left who had concealed themselves in the city and did not die amongst the people of the city rose up. And these young men went into the city and walked about in it and found the city desolate without man and only women weeping. And these young men cried out and said, Behold, this is the evil which the sons of Jacob the Hebrew did to this city in their having this day destroyed one of the Canaanitish cities and were not afraid of their lives of all the land of Canaan. And these men left the city and went to the city of Tapnak. And they came there and told the cities of Tapnak all that had befallen them and all that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem. And the information reached Jashub, king of Tapnak, and he sent men to the city of Shechem to see those young men. For the king did not believe them in this account, saying, How could two men lay waste such a large town as Shechem? And the messengers of Jashub came back and told him, saying, We came unto the city, and it is destroyed. There is not a man there only weeping women, neither is any flock or cattle there, for all that was in the city the sons of Jacob took away. And Jashab wondered at this, saying, How could two men do this thing, to destroy so large a city, and not one man able to stand against them? For the like has not been from the days of Nimrod, and not even from the remotest time has the like taken place. And Jashub king of Tapnak said to his people, Be courageous, and we will go and fight against these Hebrews, and do unto them as they did unto the city, and we will avenge the cause of the people of the city. And Jashub king of Tapnak consulted with his counselors about this matter, and his advisers said unto him, Alone thou wilt not prevail over the Hebrews, for they must be powerful to do this work to the whole city. If two of them laid waste the whole city and no one stood against them, surely if thou wilt go against them, they will all rise against us and destroy us likewise. But if thou wilt send to all the kings that surround us and let them come together, then we will go with them and fight against the sons of Jacob. Then wilt thou prevail against them. And Jashab heard the words of his counsellors, and their words pleased him and his people, and he did so. And Jashab king of Tapnak sent unto all the kings of the Amorites that surrounded Shechem and Tapnak, saying, Go up with me and assist me, and we will smite Jacob the Hebrew and all his sons, and destroy them from the earth. For thus did he do to the city of Shechem, and do you not know of it? And all the kings of the Amorites heard the evil that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem, and they were greatly astonished at them. And the seven kings of the Amorites assembled with all their armies, about ten thousand men with drawn swords, and they came to fight against the sons of Jacob. And Jacob heard that the kings of the Amorites 
had assembled to fight against his sons. And Jacob was greatly afraid, and it distressed him. And Jacob exclaimed against Simeon and Levi, saying, What is this act that you did? Why have you injured me to bring against me all the children of Canaan to destroy me and my household? For I was at rest, even I and my household, and you've done this thing to me and provoked the inhabitants of the land against me by your proceedings. And Judah answered his father, saying, Was it for naught my brothers Simeon and Levi killed all the inhabitants of Shechem? Surely it was because Shechem had humbled our sister and transgressed the command of our God to Noah and his children. For Shechem took our sister away by force and committed adultery with her. And Shechem did all this evil, and not one of the inhabitants of his city interfered with him to say, Why wilt thou do this? Surely for this my brothers went and smote the city, and the Lord delivered it into their hands, because its inhabitants had transgressed the commands of our God. Is it then for naught that they've done all this? And now, why art thou afraid or distressed? And why art thou displeased at thy brothers? And why is thine anger kindled against them? Surely our God who delivered into their hand the city of Shechem and its people. He will also deliver into our hands all the Canaanitish kings who are coming against us, and we will do unto them as my brothers did unto Shechem. Now be tranquil about them, and cast away thy fears, but trust in the Lord our God, and pray unto him to assist us and deliver us and deliver our enemies into our hands. And Judah called to one of his father's servants, Go now and see where those kings are coming against us are situated with their armies. And the servant went and looked far off, and went up opposite Mount Sihon, and saw all the camps of the kings standing in the fields. And he returned to Judah and said, Behold, the kings are situated in the field, with all their camps, a people exceedingly numerous, like unto the sand upon the seashore. And Judah said unto Simeon and Levi, and to all his brethren, Strengthen yourselves, and be sons of valor, for the Lord our God is with us. Do not fear them. Stand forth, each man, girt with his weapons of war, his bow and his sword, and we will go and fight against these uncircumcised men. The Lord is our God. He will save us. And they rose up, and each girt on his weapons of war, great and small, eleven sons of Jacob, and all the servants of Jacob with them. And all the servants of Isaac, who were with Isaac in Hebron, all came to them equipped in all sorts of war instruments. And the sons of Jacob and their servants being one hundred and twelve men, went towards these kings. And Jacob also went with them. And the sons of Jacob sent unto their father Isaac, the son of Abraham, to Hebron, the same as Kiriath Arba, saying, Pray we beseech thee for us unto the Lord our God, to protect us from the hands of the Canaanites who are coming against us, and to deliver them into our hands. And Isaac the son of Abraham prayed unto the Lord for his sons, and he said, O Lord God, thou didst promise my father, saying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and thou didst also promise me, and establish thou thy word, now that the kings of Canaan are coming together to make war with my children, because they committed no violence. Now therefore, O Lord God, God of the whole earth, pervert, I pray thee, the counsel of these kings, that they may not fight against my sons, and impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons, and bring down their pride, and that they may turn away from my sons. And with thy strong hand and outstretched arm, deliver my sons and their servants from them for power and might are in thy hands to do all this.
And the sons of Jacob and their servants went toward these kings, and they trusted in the Lord their God. And whilst they were going, Jacob their father also prayed unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, powerful and exalted God, who has reigned from the days of old, from thence till now and forever, thou art he who stirreth up wars and causeth them to cease. In thy hand are power and might to exalt and to bring down. O may my prayer be acceptable before thee, that thou mayest turn to me with thy mercies, to impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons, and terrify them and their camps, and with thy great kindness deliver all those that trust in thee. For it is thou who canst bring people under us, and reduce nations under our power. Jasher chapter 35 And all the kings of the Amorites came and took their stand in the field to consult with their counsellors what was to be done with the sons of Jacob. For they were still afraid of them, saying, Behold, two of them slew the whole of the city of Shechem. And the Lord heard the prayers of Isaac and Jacob, and he filled the hearts of all these kings' advisers with great fear and terror, that they unanimously exclaimed, Are you silly this day? Or is there no understanding in you that you will fight with the Hebrews? And why will you take a delight in your own destruction this day? Behold, two of them came to the city of Shechem without fear or terror, and they killed all the inhabitants of the city, that no man stood up against them. And how will you be able to fight with them all? Surely you know that their God is exceedingly fond of them, and has done mighty things for them, such as have not been from the days of all. And amongst all the gods of nations there is none can do like unto his mighty deeds. Surely he delivered their father Abraham the Hebrew from the hand of Nimrod, and from the hand of all his people, who had many times sought to slay him. He delivered him also from the fire in which King Nimrod had cast him, and his God delivered him from it. And who else can do the like? Surely it was Abraham who slew the five kings of Elam when they had touched his brother's son, who in those days dwelt in Sodom, and took his servant that was faithful in his house and a few of his men, and then they pursued the kings of Elam in one night, and killed them, and restored to his brother's son all his property which they had taken from him. And surely you know the God of these Hebrews is much delighted with them, and they are also delighted with him, for they know that he delivered them from all their enemies. And behold, through his love toward his God, Abraham took his only and precious son and intended to bring him up as a burnt offering to his God. And had it not been for God who prevented him from doing this, he would have done it through his love to his God. And God saw all his works and swore unto him and promised that he would deliver his sons and all his seed from every trouble that would befall them, because he had done this thing and, through his love to his God, stifled his compassion for his child. And have you not heard what their God did to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to Abimelech, king of Gerah, through taking Abraham's wife, who said of her, She is my sister, lest they might slay him on account of her, and think of taking her for a wife? And God did unto them and their people all that you heard of. And behold, we ourselves saw with our eyes that Esau, the brother of Jacob, came to him with four hundred men with the intention of slaying him, for he called to mind that he had taken away from him his father's blessing. And he went to meet him when he came from Syria, to smite the mother with the children. And who delivered him from his hands? But his God, in whom he trusted. He delivered him from the hand of his brother, and also from the hands of his enemies, and surely he again will protect them. Who does not know 
that it was their God who inspired them with strength to do to the town of Shechem the evil which you heard of. Could it then be with their own strength that two men could destroy such a large city as Shechem, had it not been for their God, in whom they trusted? He said and did unto them all this to slay the inhabitants of the city in their city. And can you then prevail over them who have come forth together from your city to fight with the whole of them, even if a thousand times as many more should come to your assistance? Surely you know and understand that you do not come to fight with them, but you come to war with their God, who made choice of them, and you have therefore all come this day to be destroyed. Now therefore refrain from this evil which you are endeavoring to bring upon yourselves, and it will be better for you not to go to battle with them, although they are but few in numbers, because their God is with them. And when the kings of the Amorites heard all the words of their advisers, their hearts were filled with terror, and they were afraid of the sons of Jacob, and would not fight against them. And they inclined their ears to the words of their advisers, and they listened to all their words, and the words of the counsellors greatly pleased the kings, and they did so. And the kings turned and refrained from the sons of Jacob, for they durst not approach them to make war with them, for they were greatly afraid of them. And their hearts melted within them from their fear of them. For this proceeded from the Lord to them, for he heard the prayers of his servants Isaac and Jacob, for they trusted in him. And all these kings returned with their camps on that day, each to his own city, and they did not at that time fight with the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob kept their station that day till evening opposite Mount Sion. And seeing that these kings did not come to fight against them, the sons of Jacob returned home. Jasher chapter 36 At that time the Lord appeared unto Jacob, saying, Arise, go to Bethel, and remain there, and make there an altar to the Lord who appeareth unto thee, who delivereth thee and thy sons from affliction. And Jacob rose up with his sons and all belonging to him, and they went and came to Bethel according to the word of the Lord. And Jacob was ninety-nine years old when he went up to Bethel. And Jacob and his sons and all the people that were with him remained in Bethel in Luz. And he there built an altar to the Lord who appeared unto him. And Jacob and his sons remained in Bethel six months. At that time, died Deborah, the daughter of Uz, the nurse of Rebekah, who had been with Jacob. And Jacob buried her beneath Bethel, under an oak that was there. And Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the mother of Jacob, also died at that time in Hebron, the same as Kiriath Arba. And she was buried in the cave of Machpelah, which Abraham had bought from the children of Heth. And the life of Rebekah was one hundred and thirty-three years, and she died. And when Jacob heard that his mother Rebekah was dead, he wept bitterly for his mother, and made a great mourning for her, and for Deborah her nurse beneath the oak. And he called the name of that place Alon Bacoth. And Laban the Syrian died in those days. For God smote him because he transgressed the covenant that existed between him and Jacob. And Jacob was a hundred years old when the Lord appeared unto him, and blessed him, and called his name Israel. And Rachel, the wife of Jacob, conceived in those days. And at that time Jacob and all belonging to him journeyed from Bethel to go to his father's house to Hebron. And whilst they were going on the road, and there was yet but a little way to come to Ephrath, Rachel bare a son, and she had hard labor, and she died. And Jacob buried her in the way to Ephrath, 
which is Bethlehem. And he set a pillar upon her grave, which is there unto this day. And the days of Rachel were forty-five years, and she died. And Jacob called the name of his son that was born to him, which Rachel bare unto him, Benjamin, for he was born to him in the land on the right hand. And it was after the death of Rachel that Jacob pitched his tent in the tent of her handmaid, Bilhah. And Reuben was jealous for his mother Leah on account of this, and he was filled with anger, and he rose up in his anger and went and entered the tent of Bilhah, and he thence removed his father's bed. At that time the portion of birthright, together with the kingly and priestly offices, was removed from the sons of Reuben, for he had profaned his father's bed. And the birthright was given unto Joseph, the kingly office to Judah, and the priesthood unto Levi, because Reuben had defiled his father's bed. And these are the generations of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. And the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, the firstborn, and Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and their sister Dinah. And the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, were Gad and Asher. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, were Dan and Naphtali. These are the sons of Jacob which were born to him in Paden Aram. And Jacob and his sons, and all belonging to him, journeyed and came to Mamre, which is Kiriath Arba, that is in Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And Jacob, with his sons and all belonging to him, dwelt with his father in Hebron. And his brother Esau and his sons, and all belonging to him, went to the land of Seir, and dwelt there, and had possessions in the land of Seir. And the children of Esau were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly in the land of Seir. And these are the generations of Esau that were born to him in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Esau were five. And Adar bare to Esau his firstborn Eliphaz, and she also bare to him Ruel. And Ali Bamar bare to him Jeush, Yalem, and Korah. These are the children of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, were Teman, Umar, Zepho, Gatam, Kenaz, and Amalek. And the sons of Ruel were Nakath, Zerach, Shemar, and Mizah. And the sons of Jeush were Timnah, Alva, Jetheth. And the sons of Yalem were Elah, Phinor, and Kenaz. And the sons of Korah were Teman, Mibsar, Magdiel, and Eram. These are the families of the sons of Esau, according to their dukedoms in the land of Seir. And these are the names of the sons of Seir the Horite, inhabitants of the land of Seir. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anar, Daishan, Ezer, and Daishon, being seven sons. And the children of Lotan were Horai, Heman, and their sister Timnah, that is Timnah who came to Jacob and his sons, and they would not give ear to her, and she went and became a concubine to Eliphaz the son of Esau, and she bare to him Amalek. And the sons of Shobal were Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam, and the sons of Zibion were Ajar and Anah. This was that Anah who found the Yemim in the wilderness when he fed the asses of Zibion his father. And whilst he was feeding his father's asses, he led them to the wilderness at different times to feed them. And there was a day that he brought them to one of the deserts on the seashore, opposite the wilderness of the people. And whilst he was feeding them, behold, a very heavy storm came from the other side of the sea and rested upon the asses that were feeding there. And they all stood still. And afterward, about one hundred and twenty great and terrible animals came out from the wilderness at the other side of the sea, and they all came to the place where the asses were, and they placed themselves there. And those animals, from their middle downward, were in the shape of the children of men, and from their middle upward 
Some had the likeness of bears, and some the likeness of the kefirs, with tails behind them from between their shoulders, reaching down to the earth like the tails of the dukifath. And these animals came and mounted and rode upon these asses and led them away, and they went away unto this day. And one of these animals approached Ana and smote him with his tail, and then fled from that place. And when he saw this work, he was exceedingly afraid of his life, and he fled and escaped to the city. And he related to his sons and brothers all that had happened to him. And many men went to seek the asses, but could not find them. And Anar and his brothers went no more to that place from that day following, for they were greatly afraid of their lives. And the children of Anar, the son of Seir, were Dishon and his sister Alibema. And the children of Dishon were Hemdan, Eshban, Ethran, and Kiran. And the children of Ezer were Bilhan, Zevan, and Achan. And the children of Dishon were Uz and Aram. These are the families of the children of Seir the Horite, according to their dukedoms in the land of Seir. And Esau and his children dwelt in the land of Seir the Horite, the inhabitant of the land. And they had possessions in it, and were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob and his children, and all belonging to them, dwelt with their father Isaac in the land of Canaan as the Lord had commanded Abraham, their father. Jasher chapter 37 And in the one hundred and fifth year of the life of Jacob, that is the ninth year of Jacob's dwelling with his children in the land of Canaan, he came from Paden Aram. And in those days Jacob journeyed with his children from Hebron, and they went and returned to the city of Shechem. They and all belonging to them, and they dwelt there. For the children of Jacob obtained good and fat pasture land for their cattle in the city of Shechem, the city of Shechem having then been rebuilt, and there were in it about three hundred men and women. And Jacob and his children, and all belonging to him, dwelt in the part of the field which Jacob had bought from Hamor, the father of Shechem, when he came from Paden Aram before Simeon and Levi had smitten the city. And all those kings of the Canaanites and Amorites that surrounded the city of Shechem heard that the sons of Jacob had again come to Shechem and dwelt there. And they said, Shall the sons of Jacob the Hebrew again come to the city and dwell therein, after that they have smitten its inhabitants and driven them out? Shall they now return and also drive out those who are dwelling in the city, or slay them? And all the kings of Canaan again assembled, and they came together to make war with Jacob and his sons. And Jashub, king of Tapnach, sent also to all his neighboring kings, to Elan, king of Gaash, to Ihuri, king of Shiloh, and to Parathon, king of Kezar, and to Suzai, king of Sarton, and to Laban, king of beth Koran, and to Shabia, king of Othnamah, saying, Come up to me and assist me, and let us smite Jacob the Hebrew and his sons, and all belonging to him. For they are again come to Shechem to possess it, and to slay its inhabitants as before. And all these kings assembled together, and came with all their camps, a people exceedingly plentiful, like the sand upon the seashore, and they were all opposite to Tapnak. And Jashub, king of Tapnak, went forth to them with all his army, and he encamped with them opposite to Tapnak, without the city. And all these kings they divided unto seven divisions, being seven camps against the sons of Jacob. And they sent a declaration to Jacob and his son, saying, Come you all forth to us, that we may have an interview together in the plain, and revenge the cause of the men of Shechem who you slew in their city. And you will now again return to the city of Shechem, and dwell therein, and slay its inhabitants as before. And the sons of Jacob heard this, 
and their anger was kindled exceedingly at the words of the kings of Canaan. And ten of the sons of Jacob hastened and rose up, and each of them girt on his weapons of war. And there were one hundred and two of their servants with them, equipped in battle array. And all these men, the sons of Jacob with their servants, went toward these kings. And Jacob their father was with them, and they all stood upon the heap of Shechem. And Jacob prayed to the Lord for his sons. And he spread forth his hands to the Lord, and he said, O God, thou art an almighty God, thou art our Father, thou didst form us, and we are the works of thine hands. I pray thee, deliver my sons through thy mercy from the hand of their enemies, who are this day coming to fight with them, and save them from their hand. For in thy hand is power and might to save the few from the many. And give unto thy sons, thy servants, strength of heart and might to fight with their enemies, to subdue them and make their enemies fall before them. And let not my sons and their servants die through the hands of the children of Canaan. But if it seemeth good in thine eyes to take away the lives of my sons and their servants, take them in thy great mercy through the hands of thy ministers, that they may not perish this day by the hands of the kings of the Amorites. And when Jacob ceased praying to the Lord, the earth shook from its place, and the sun darkened, and all these kings were terrified, and a great consternation seized them. And the Lord hearkened to the prayer of Jacob, and the Lord impressed the hearts of all the kings and their hosts with the terror and awe of the sons of Jacob. For the Lord caused them to hear the voice of chariots, and the voice of mighty horses from the sons of Jacob, and the voice of a great army accompanying them. And these kings were seized with great terror at the sons of Jacob. And whilst they were standing in their quarters, behold, the sons of Jacob advanced upon them with one hundred and twelve men, with a great and tremendous shouting. And when the kings saw the sons of Jacob advancing toward them, they were still more panic-struck, and they were inclined to retreat from before the sons of Jacob, as at first, and not to fight with them. But they did not retreat, saying, it would be a disgrace to us thus twice to retreat from before the Hebrews. And the sons of Jacob came near and advanced against all these kings and their armies. And they saw, and behold, it was a very mighty people, numerous as the sand of the sea. And the sons of Jacob called unto the Lord and said, Help us, O Lord, help us and answer us, for we trust in thee, and let us not die by the hands of these uncircumcised men who this day have come against us. And the sons of Jacob girt on their weapons of war, and they took in their hands each man his shield and his javelin, and they approached to battle. And Judah the son of Jacob ran first before his brethren, and ten of his servants with him, and he went toward these kings. And Jashub king of Tapnach also came forth first with his army before Judah. And Judah saw Jashab and his army coming toward him, and Judah's wrath was kindled, and his anger burned within him. And he approached a battle in which Judah ventured his life. And Jashub and all his army were advancing toward Judah, and he was riding upon a very strong and powerful horse. And Jashub was a very valiant man and covered with iron and brass from head to foot. And whilst he was upon the horse, he shot arrows with both hands from before and behind, as was his manner in all his battles, and he never missed the place to which he aimed his arrows. And when Jashub came to fight with Judah, and was darting many arrows against Judah, the Lord bound the hand of Jashub, and all the arrows that he shot rebounded upon his own men. And notwithstanding this, Jashub kept advancing toward Judah to challenge him with the arrows. But the distance between them was about thirty cubits. And when Judah saw Jashub darting forth his arrows against him, he ran to him 
with his wrath excited might. And Judah took up a large stone from the ground, and its weight was sixty shekels. And Judah ran toward Jashub, and with the stone struck him on his shield, that Jashub was stunned with the blow, and fell off from his horse to the ground. And the shield burst asunder out of the hand of Jashub, and through the force of the blow sprang to the distance of about fifteen cubits, and the shield fell before the second camp. And the kings that came with Jashub saw at a distance the strength of Judah, the son of Jacob, and what he had done to Jashub, and they were terribly afraid of Judah. And they assembled near Jashub's camp, seeing his confusion. And Judah drew his sword and smote forty-two men of the camp of Jashub. And the whole of Jashub's camp fled before Judah, and no man stood against him. And they left Jashub and fled from him. And Jashub was still prostrate upon the ground. And Jashub, seeing that all the men of his camp had fled from him, hastened and rose up with terror against Judah, and stood upon his legs opposite Judah. And Jashub had a single combat with Judah, placing shield toward shield. And Jashub's men all fled, for they were greatly afraid of Judah. And Jashub took his spear in his hand to strike Judah upon his head, but Judah had quickly placed his shield to his head against Jashub's spear, so that the shield of Judah received the blow from Jashub's spear, and the shield was split in two. And when Judah saw that his shield was split, he hastily drew his sword and smote Jashub at his ankles and cut off his feet, that Jashub fell upon the ground, and the spear fell from his hand. And Judah hastily picked up Jashub's spear, with which he severed his head, and cast it next to his feet. And when the sons of Jacob saw what Judah had done to Jashub, they all ran into the ranks of the other kings. And the sons of Jacob fought with the army of Jashub and the armies of all the kings that were there. And the sons of Jacob caused fifteen thousand of their men to fall and they smote them as if smiting at goods, and the rest fled for their lives. And Judah was still standing by the body of Jashub, and stripped Jashub of his coat of mail. And Judah also took off the iron and brass that was about Jashub. And behold, nine men of the captains of Jashub came along to fight against Judah. And Judah hastened and took up a stone from the ground, and with it smote one of them upon the head, and his skull was fractured, and the body also fell from the horse to the ground. And the eight captains that remained, seeing the strength of Judah, were greatly afraid, and they fled. And Judah with his ten men pursued them, and they overtook them and slew them. And the sons of Jacob were still smiting the armies of the kings, and they slew many of them. But those kings daringly kept their stand with their captains, and they did not retreat from their places. And they exclaimed against those of their armies that fled from before the sons of Jacob. But none would listen to them, for they were afraid of their lives, lest they should die. And all the sons of Jacob, having smitten the armies of the kings, returned and came before Judah. And Judah was still slaying the eight captains of Jashub, and stripping off their garments. And Levi saw Elon, king of Gaash, advancing toward him, with his fourteen captains to smite him. But Levi did not know it for certain. And Elon, with his captains, approached nearer. And Levi looked back and saw that battle was given him in the rear. And Levi ran with twelve of his servants, and they went and slew Elon and his captains with the edge of the sword. Jasher chapter 38 And I, Hurai, king of Shiloh, came up to assist Elon, and he approached Jacob, when Jacob drew his bow that was in his hand, and with an arrow struck I, Hurai, which caused his death. And when I, Hurai, king of Shiloh, was dead, the four remaining kings fled from their station with the rest of the captains, and they endeavoured to retreat, saying, 
we have no more strength with the Hebrews after having killed the three kings and their captains, who were more powerful than we are. And when the sons of Jacob saw that the remaining kings had removed from their station, they pursued them. And Jacob also came from the heap of Shechem from the place where he was standing. And they went after the kings, and they approached them with their servants. And the kings and the captains with the rest of their armies, seeing that the sons of Jacob approached them, were afraid of their lives, and fled till they reached the city of Kazar. And the sons of Jacob pursued them to the gate of the city of Kazar, and they smote a great smiting amongst the kings and their armies, about four thousand men. And whilst they were smiting the army of the kings, Jacob was occupied with his bow, confining himself to smiting the kings, and he slew them all. He slew Parathon, king of Kazar, at the gate of the city of Kazar. And he afterward smote Susai, king of Sartan, and Laban, king of beth Corin, and Shabia, king of Machnima. And he slew them all with arrows, an arrow to each of them, and they died. And the sons of Jacob, seeing that all the kings were dead, and that they were broken up and retreating, continued to carry on the battle with the armies of the kings opposite the gate of Kazar and they still smote about four hundred of their men. And three of the men of the servants of Jacob fell in that battle. And when Judah saw that three of his servants had died, it grieved him greatly, and his anger burned within him against the Amorites. And all the men that remained of the armies of the kings were greatly afraid of their lives. And they ran and broke the gate of the walls of the city of Kazar and they all entered the city for safety, and they concealed themselves in the midst of the city of Kesar, for the city of Kesar was very large and extensive. And when all these armies had entered the city, the sons of Jacob ran after them to the city. And four mighty men, experienced in battle, went forth from the city and stood against the entrance of the city, with drawn swords and spears in their hands and they placed themselves opposite the sons of Jacob, and would not suffer them to enter the city. And Naphtali ran and came between them, and with his sword smote two of them, and cut off their heads at one stroke. And he turned to the other two, and behold, they had fled. And he pursued them, overtook them, smote them, and slew them. And the sons of Jacob came to the city and saw and there was another wall to the city. And they sought for the gate of the wall, and could not find it. And Judah sprang upon the top of the wall, and Simeon and Levi followed him, and they all three descended from the wall into the city. And Simeon and Levi slew all the men who ran for safety into the city, and also the inhabitants of the city, with their wives and little ones they slew with the edge of the sword, and the cries of the city ascended up to heaven. And Dan and Naphtali sprang upon the wall to see what caused the noise of lamentation, for the sons of Jacob felt anxious about their brothers. And they heard the inhabitants of the city speaking with weeping and supplication, saying, Take all that we possess in the city, and go thy way, only do not put us to death. And when Judah, Simeon, and Levi had ceased smiting the inhabitants of the city, they ascended the wall, and called to Dan and Naphtali, who were upon the wall, and to the rest of their brothers. And Simeon and Levi informed them of the entrance into the city, and all the sons of Jacob came to fetch the spoil. And the sons of Jacob took the spoil of the city of Kazar, the flocks and herds and the property and they took all that could be captured, and went away that day from the city. And on the next day the sons of Jacob went to Sartan, for they heard that the men of Sartan who had remained in the city were assembling to fight with them for having slain their king. And Sartan was a very high and fortified city, and it had a deep rampart surrounding the city. And the pillar of the rampart was about fifty cubits, and its breadth forty cubits, 
and there was no place for a man to enter the city on account of the rampart. And the sons of Jacob saw the rampart of the city, and they sought an entrance in it, but could not find it. For the entrance to the city was at the rear, and every man that wished to come into the city came by that road and went around the whole city, and he afterwards entered the city. And the sons of Jacob, seeing that they could not find the way into the city, their anger was kindled greatly. And the inhabitants of the city, seeing that the sons of Jacob were coming to them, were greatly afraid of them, for they had heard of their strength and what they'd done to Kazar. And the inhabitants of the city of Sarton could not go out toward the sons of Jacob after having assembled in the city to fight against them, lest they might thereby get into the city. But when they saw that they were coming toward them, they were greatly afraid of them, for they had heard of their strength and what they had done to Kazar. So the inhabitants of Sardon speedily took away the bridge of the road of the city from its place before the sons of Jacob came, and they brought it into the city. And the sons of Jacob came and sought the way into the city and could not find it. And the inhabitants of the city went up to the top of the wall and saw, and behold, the sons of Jacob were seeking an entrance into the city. And the inhabitants of the city reproached the sons of Jacob from the top of the wall, and they cursed them. And the sons of Jacob heard the reproaches, and they were greatly incensed, and their anger burned within them. And the sons of Jacob were provoked at them, and they all rose and sprang over the rampart with the force of their strength, and through their might passed the forty cubits' breadth of the rampart. And when they had passed the rampart, they stood under the wall of the city, and they found all the gates of the city enclosed with iron doors. And the sons of Jacob came near to break open the doors of the gates of the city, and the inhabitants did not let them, for from the top of the wall they were casting stones and arrows upon them. And the number of the people that were upon the wall was about four hundred men. And when the sons of Jacob saw that the men of the city would not let them open the gates of the city, they sprang and ascended the top of the wall. And Judah went up first to the east part of the city, and Gad and Asher went up after him to the west corner of the city, and Simeon and Levi to the north, and Dan and Reuben to the south. And the men who were on the top of the wall, the inhabitants of the city, seeing that the sons of Jacob were coming up to them, they all fled from the wall, descended into the city, and concealed themselves in the midst of the city. And Issachar and Naphtali that remained under the wall approached and broke the gates of the city, and kindled a fire at the gates of the city, that the iron melted. And all the sons of Jacob came into the city, they and all their men, and they fought with the inhabitants of the city of Sarton and smote them with the edge of the sword, and no man stood up before them. And about two hundred men fled from the city, and they all went and hid themselves in a certain tower in the city. And Judah pursued them to the tower, and he broke down the tower, which fell upon the men, and they all died. And the sons of Jacob went up the road of the roof of that tower, and they saw and behold, there was another strong and high tower at a distance in the city, and the top of it reached to heaven. And the sons of Jacob hastened and descended and went with all their men to that tower, and found it filled with about three hundred men, women, and little ones. And the sons of Jacob smote a great smiting amongst those men in the tower, and they ran away and fled from them. And Simeon and Levi pursued them when twelve mighty and valiant men came out to them from the place where they had concealed themselves. And those twelve men maintained a strong battle against Simeon and Levi. And Simeon and Levi could not prevail over them. And those valiant men broke the shields of Simeon and Levi, and one of them struck at Levi's head with his sword. And Levi 
hastily placed his hand to his head, for he was afraid of the sword. And the sword struck Levi's hand, and it wanted but little to the hand of Levi being cut off. And Levi seized the sword of the valiant man in his hand, and took it forcibly from the man, and with it he struck at the head of the powerful man, and he severed his head. And eleven men approached to fight with Levi, for they saw that one of them was killed. And the sons of Jacob fought, but the sons of Jacob could not prevail over them, for those men were very powerful. And the sons of Jacob, seeing that they could not prevail over them, Simeon gave a loud and tremendous shriek, and the eleven powerful men were stunned at the voice of Simeon's shrieking. And Judah at a distance knew the voice of Simeon's shouting, and Naphtali and Judah ran with their shields to Simeon and Levi, and found them fighting with those powerful men, unable to prevail over them as their shields were broken. And Naphtali saw that the shields of Simeon and Levi were broken, and he took two shields from his servants and brought them to Simeon and Levi. And Simeon, Levi, and Judah on that day fought all three against the eleven mighty men until the time of sunset, but they could not prevail over them. And this was told unto Jacob, and he was sorely grieved. And he prayed unto the Lord, and he and Naphtali his son went against these mighty men. And Jacob approached and drew his bow, and came nigh unto the mighty men, and slew three of their men with the bow. And the remaining eight turned back. And behold, the war waged against them in the front and rear, and they were greatly afraid of their lives, and could not stand before the sons of Jacob and they fled from before them. And in their flight they met Dan and Asher coming toward them, and they suddenly fell upon them and fought with them and slew two of them. And Judah and his brothers pursued them and smote the remainder of them and slew them. And all the sons of Jacob returned and walked about the city, searching if they could find any men. And they found about twenty young men in a cave in the city and Gad and Asher smote them all. And Dan and Naphtali lighted upon the rest of the men who had fled and escaped from the second tower, and they smote them all. And the sons of Jacob smote all the inhabitants of the city of Sardin, but the women and little ones they left in the city and did not slay them. And all the inhabitants of the city of Sardin were powerful men, one of them would pursue a thousand, and two of them would not flee from ten thousand of the rest of men. And the sons of Jacob slew all the inhabitants of the city of Sardin with the edge of the sword, that no man stood up against them, and they left the women in the city. And the sons of Jacob took all the spoil of the city and captured what they desired, and they took flocks and herds and property from the city. And the sons of Jacob did unto Sartan and its inhabitants, as they had done to Kazar and its inhabitants. And they turned and went away. Jasher chapter 39 And when the sons of Jacob went from the city of Sartan, they had gone about two hundred cubits, when they met the inhabitants of Tapnak coming toward them. For they went out to fight with them, because they had smitten the king of Tapnak and all his men. So all that remained in the city of Tapnak came out to fight with the sons of Jacob. And they thought to retake from them the booty and the spoil which they captured from Kazar and Sartan. And the rest of the men of Tapnak fought with the sons of Jacob in that place. And the sons of Jacob smote them, and they fled before them, and they pursued them to the city of Arbalan, and they all fell before the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob returned and came to Tapnak to take away the spoil of Tapnak. And when they came to Tapnak, they heard that the people of Arbalan had gone out to meet them to save the spoil of their brethren. And the sons of Jacob left 
ten of their men in Tapnak to plunder the city, and they went out toward the people of Arbalan. And the men of Arbalan went out with their wives to fight with the sons of Jacob, for their wives were experienced in battle. And they went out about four hundred men and women. And all the sons of Jacob shouted with a loud voice, and they all ran toward the inhabitants of Arbalan, and with a great and tremendous voice. And the inhabitants of Arbalan heard the noise of the shouting of the sons of Jacob, and their roaring like the noise of lions, and like the roaring of the sea and its waves. And fear and terror possessed their hearts on account of the sons of Jacob, and they were terribly afraid of them. And they retreated and fled before them into the city. And the sons of Jacob pursued them to the gate of the city, and they came upon them in the city. And the sons of Jacob fought with them in the city, and all their women were engaged in slinging against the sons of Jacob. And the combat was very severe amongst them the whole of that day till evening. And the sons of Jacob could not prevail over them, and the sons of Jacob had almost perished in that battle. And the sons of Jacob cried unto the Lord, and greatly gained strength toward evening. And the sons of Jacob smote all the inhabitants of Arbalan by the edge of the sword, men, women, and little ones. And also the remainder of the people who had fled from Satan, the sons of Jacob, smote them in Arbalan. And the sons of Jacob did unto Arbalan and Tapnak as they had done to Kazar and Satan. And when the women saw that all the men were dead, they went upon the roofs of the city and smote the sons of Jacob by showering down stones like rain. And the sons of Jacob hastened and came into the city and seized all the women and smote them with the edge of the sword. And the sons of Jacob captured all the spoil and booty, flocks and herds and cattle. And the sons of Jacob did unto Machnema as they had done to Tapnak, to Keza, and to Shiloh. And they turned from there and went away. And on the fifth day the sons of Jacob heard that the people of Gaash had gathered against them to battle, because they had slain their king and their captains. For there had been fourteen captains in the city of Gaash, and the sons of Jacob had slain them all in the first battle. And the sons of Jacob that day girt on their weapons of war, and they marched to battle against the inhabitants of Gaash. And in Gaash there was a strong and mighty people of the people of the Amorites, and Gaash was the strongest and best fortified city of all the cities of the Amorites, and it had three walls. And the sons of Jacob came to Gaash, and they found the gates of the city locked, and about five hundred men standing at the top of the outermost wall, and a people numerous as the sand upon the seashore were in ambush for the sons of Jacob from without the city at the rear thereof. And the sons of Jacob approached to open the gates of the city. And whilst they were drawing nigh, behold, those who were in ambush at the rear of the city came forth from their places and surrounded the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob were enclosed between the people of Gaash, and the battle was both to their front and rear. And all the men that were upon the wall were casting from the wall upon them arrows and stones. And Judah, seeing that the men of Gaash were getting too heavy for them, gave a most piercing and tremendous shriek. And all the men of Gaash were terrified at the voice of Judah's cry. And men fell from the wall at his powerful shriek. And all those that were from without and within the city were greatly afraid of their lives. And the sons of Jacob still came nigh to break the doors of the city, when the men of Gaash threw stones and arrows upon them from the top of the wall and made them flee from the gate. And the sons of Jacob returned against the men of Gaash who were with them from without the city, and they smote them terribly as striking against goods, and they could not stand against the sons of Jacob, for fright and terror had seized them at the shriek of Judah. 
And the sons of Jacob slew all those men who were without the city. And the sons of Jacob still drew nigh to effect an entrance into the city and to fight under the city walls, but they could not, for all the inhabitants of Gaash who remained in the city had surrounded the walls of Gaash in every direction, so that the sons of Jacob were unable to approach the city to fight with them. And the sons of Jacob came nigh to one corner to fight under the wall. The inhabitants of Gaash threw arrows and stones upon them like showers of rain, and they fled from under the wall. And the people of Gaash who were upon the wall, seeing that the sons of Jacob could not prevail over them from under the wall, reproached the sons of Jacob in these words, saying, What is the matter with you in the battle that you cannot prevail? Can you then do unto the mighty city of Gaash and its inhabitants as you did to the cities of the Amorites that were not so powerful? Surely to those weak ones amongst us you did those things, and slew them in the entrance of the city, for they had no strength when they were terrified at the sound of your shouting. And will you now then be able to fight in this place? Surely here you will all die and we will avenge the cause of those cities that you have laid waste. And the inhabitants of Gaash greatly reproached the sons of Jacob, and reviled them with their gods, and continued to cast arrows and stones upon them from the wall. And Judah and his brothers heard the words of the inhabitants of Gaash, and their anger was greatly roused. And Judah was jealous of his God in this matter. And he called out and said, O Lord, help! Send help to us and our brothers. And he ran at a distance with all his might, with his drawn sword in his hand, and he sprang from the earth, and by dint of his strength mounted the wall, and his sword fell from his hand. And Judah shouted upon the wall, and all the men that were upon the wall were terrified, and some of them fell from the wall into the city and died. And those who were yet upon the wall, when they saw Judah's strength, they were greatly afraid, and fled for their lives into the city for safety. And some were emboldened to fight with Judah upon the wall. And they came nigh to slay him, when they saw that there was no sword in Judah's hand and they thought of casting him from the wall to his brothers. And twenty of the men came up to assist them, and they surrounded Judah, and they all shouted over him, and approached him with drawn swords, and they terrified Judah. And Judah cried out to his brothers from the wall. And Jacob and his sons drew the bow from under the wall, and smote three of the men that were upon the top of the wall. And Judah continued to cry, and he exclaimed, O Lord, help us, O Lord, deliver us. And he cried with a loud voice upon the wall. And the voice was heard at a great distance. And after this cry, he again repeated to shout. And all the men who surrounded Judah on the top of the wall were terrified. And they each threw his sword from his hand at the sound of Judah's shouting and his terror and fled. And Judah took the swords which had fallen from their hands, and Judah fought with them, and slew twenty of their men upon the wall. And about eighty men and women still ascended the wall from the city, and they all surrounded Judah. And the Lord impressed the fear of Judah in their hearts, that they were unable to approach him. And Jacob and all who were with him drew the bow from under the wall, and they slew ten men upon the wall, and they fell below the wall, before Jacob and his sons. And the people upon the wall, seeing that twenty of their men had fallen, they still ran toward Judah with drawn swords, but they could not approach him, for they were greatly terrified at Judah's strength. And one of their mighty men, whose name was Arad, approached to strike Judah upon the head with his sword, when Judah hastily put his shield to his head, and the sword hit the shield and it was split in two. And this mighty man, after he had struck Judah, ran for his life at the fear of Judah, and his feet slipped upon the wall, and he fell amongst the sons of Jacob who were below the wall. And the sons of Jacob smote him, 
and slew him. And Judah's head pained him from the blow of the powerful man, and Judah had nearly died from it. And Judah cried out upon the wall, owing to the pain produced by the blow, when Dan heard him, and his anger burned within him. And he also rose up and went at a distance and ran and sprang from the earth and mounted the wall with his wrath excited strength. And when Dan came upon the wall near unto Judah, all the men upon the wall fled who had stood against Judah. And they went up to the second wall, and they threw arrows and stones upon Dan and Judah from the second wall, and endeavored to drive them from the wall. And the arrows and stones struck Dan and Judah, and they had nearly been killed upon the wall. And wherever Dan and Judah fled from the wall, they were attacked with arrows and stones from the second wall. And Jacob and his sons were still at the entrance of the city, below the first wall, and they were not able to draw their bow against the inhabitants of the city, as they could not be seen by them, being upon the second wall. And Dan and Judah, when they could no longer bear the stones and arrows that fell upon them from the second wall, they both sprang upon the second wall near the people of the city. And when the people of the city who were upon the second wall saw that Dan and Judah had come to them upon the second wall, they all cried out and descended below beneath the walls. And Jacob and his sons heard the noise of the shouting from the people of the city. And they were still at the entrance of the city. And they were anxious about Dan and Judah, who were not seen by them, they being upon the second wall. And Naphtali went up with his wrath excited might, and sprang upon the first wall to see what caused the noise of shouting which they had heard in the city. And Issachar and Zebulun drew nigh to break the doors of the city, and they opened the gates of the city and came into the city. And Naphtali leaped from the first wall to the second and came to assist his brothers. And the inhabitants of Gaash, who were upon the wall, seeing that Naphtali was the third who had come up to assist his brothers, they all fled and descended into the city. And Jacob and all his sons and all their young men came into the city to them. And Judah and Dan and Naphtali descended from the wall into the city and pursued the inhabitants of the city. And Simeon and Levi were from without the city, and knew not that the gate was opened. And they went up from there to the wall, and came down to their brothers into the city. And the inhabitants of the city had all descended into the city. And the sons of Jacob came to them in different directions, and the battle waged against them from the front and the rear. And the sons of Jacob smote them terribly, and slew about twenty thousand of them, men and women. Not one of them could stand up against the sons of Jacob. And the blood flowed plentifully in the city, and it was like a brook of water. And the blood flowed like a brook to the outer part of the city, and reached the desert of beth Corin. And the people of beth Corin saw at a distance the blood flowing from the city of Gaash. And about seventy men from amongst them ran to see the blood, and they came to the place where the blood was. And they followed the track of the blood, and came to the wall of the city of Gaash. And they saw the blood issue from the city, and they heard the voice of crying from the inhabitants of Gaash, for it ascended unto heaven, and the blood was continuing to flow abundantly, like a brook of water. And all the sons of Jacob were still smiting the inhabitants of Gaash, and were engaged in slaying them till evening, about twenty thousand men and women. And all the people of Corinne said, Surely this is the work of the Hebrews, for they are still carrying on war in all the cities of the Amorites. And those people hastened and ran to beth Corin and each took his weapons of war, and they cried out to all the inhabitants of beth Corin, who also girt on their weapons of war, to go and fight with the sons of Jacob. And when the sons of Jacob were done smiting the inhabitants of Gaash, 
they walked about the city to strip all the slain. And coming in the innermost part of the city, and further on, they met three very powerful men, and there was no sword in their hand. And the sons of Jacob came up to the place where they were, and the powerful men ran away. And one of them had taken Zebulun, who he saw was a young lad and of short stature, and with his might dashed him to the ground. And Jacob ran to him with his sword, and Jacob smote him below his loins with the sword and cut him in two. And the body fell upon Zebulun. And the second one approached and seized Jacob to fell him to the ground. And Jacob turned to him and shouted to him, whilst Simeon and Levi ran and smote him on the hips with the sword and felled him to the ground. And the powerful man rose up from the ground with wrath excited might. And Judah came to him before he had gained his footing and struck him upon the head with the sword. And his head was split, and he died. And the third powerful man, seeing that his companions were killed, ran from before the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob pursued him in the city. And whilst the powerful man was fleeing, he found one of the swords of the inhabitants of the city, and he picked it up and turned to the sons of Jacob and fought them with that sword. And the powerful man ran to Judah to strike him upon the head with the sword. And there was no shield in the hand of Judah. And whilst he was aiming to strike, Naphtali hastily took his shield and put it to Judah's head. And the sword of the powerful man hit the shield of Naphtali, and Judah escaped the sword. And Simeon and Levi ran upon the powerful man with their swords and struck at him forcibly with their swords. And the two swords entered the body of the powerful man and divided it in two lengthwise. And the sons of Jacob smote the three mighty men at that time, together with all the inhabitants of Gaash. And the day was about to decline. And the sons of Jacob walked about Gaash and took all the spoil of the city, even the little ones and women they did not suffer to live. And the sons of Jacob did unto Gaash as they'd done to Sartan and Shiloh. Jasher chapter 40 And the sons of Jacob led away all the spoil of Gaash, and went out of the city by night. They were going out marching toward the castle of beth Corin, and the inhabitants of beth Corin were going to the castle to meet them. And on that night the sons of Jacob fought with the inhabitants of beth Corin in the castle of beth Corin. And all the inhabitants of beth Corin were mighty men. One of them would not flee from before a thousand men. And they fought on that night upon the castle. And their shouts were heard on that night from afar. And the earth quaked at their shouting. And the sons of Jacob were afraid of those men, for they were not accustomed to fight in the dark. And they were greatly confounded. And the sons of Jacob cried unto the Lord, saying, Give help to us, O Lord. Deliver us that we may not die by the hands of these uncircumcised men. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of the sons of Jacob. And the Lord caused great terror and confusion to seize the people of beth Corin, And they fought amongst themselves, the one with the other in the darkness of night, and smote each other in great numbers. And the sons of Jacob, knowing that the Lord had brought a spirit of perverseness amongst those men, and that they fought each man with his neighbor, went forth from among the bands of the people of beth Corin, and went as far as the descent of the castle of beth Corin, and farther. And they tarried there securely with their young men on that night. And the people of beth Corin fought the whole night, one man with his brother and the other with his neighbor. And they cried out in every direction upon the castle, and their cry was heard at a distance. And the whole earth shook at their voice, for they were powerful above all the people of the earth. And all the inhabitants of the cities of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and all the kings of Canaan, and also those who were on the other side of Jordan, 
heard the noise of the shouting on that night. And they said, Surely these are the battles of the Hebrews who are fighting against the seven cities who came nigh unto them. And who can stand against those Hebrews? And all the inhabitants of the cities of the Canaanites and all those who were on the other side of the Jordan were greatly afraid of the sons of Jacob. For they said, Behold, the same will be done to us as was done to those cities. For who can stand against their mighty strength? And the cries of the Koronites were very great on that night and continued to increase. And they smote each other till morning, and numbers of them were killed. And the morning appeared, and all the sons of Jacob rose up at daybreak and went up to the castle, and they smote those who remained of the Koronites in a terrible manner, and they were all killed in the castle. And the sixth day appeared, and all the inhabitants of Canaan saw at a distance all the people of Beth Corin lying dead in the castle of Beth Corin, and strewed about as carcasses of lambs and goats. And the sons of Jacob led all the spoil which they had captured from Gaash and went to Beth Corin, and they found the city full of people like the sand of the sea, and they fought with them. And the sons of Jacob smote them there till evening time. And the sons of Jacob did unto Beth Corin as they had done to Gaash and Tapnach, and as they had done to Kezar, to Sarton, and to Shiloh. And the sons of Jacob took with them the spoil of Beth Corin and all the spoil of the cities, and on that day they went home to Shechem. And the sons of Jacob came home to the city of Shechem, and they remained without the city, and they then rested there from the war and tarried there all night. And all their servants, together with all the spoil that they'd taken from the cities, lay left without the city. And they did not enter the city, for they said, Peradventure, there may yet be more fighting against us, and they may come to besiege us in Shechem. And Jacob and his sons and their servants remained on that night and the next day in the portion of the field which Jacob had purchased from Hamor for five shekels and all that they had captured was with them. And all the booty which the sons of Jacob had captured was in the portion of the field, immense as the sand upon the seashore. And the inhabitants of the land observed them from afar, and all the inhabitants of the land were afraid of the sons of Jacob who had done this thing, for no king from the days of old had ever done the like. And the seven kings of the Canaanites resolved to make peace with the sons of Jacob, for they were greatly afraid of their lives on account of the sons of Jacob. And on that day, being the seventh day, Japhia, king of Hebron, sent secretly to the king of Ai, and to the king of Gibeon, and to the king of Shalem, and to the king of Adullam, and to the king of Lachish, and to the king of Kazar, and to all the Canaanitish kings who were under their subjection, saying, Go up with me, and come to me that we may go to the sons of Jacob, and I will make peace with them, and form a treaty with them, lest all your lands be destroyed by the swords of the sons of Jacob, as they did to Shechem and the cities around it, as you have heard and seen. And when you come to me, do not come with many men, but let every king bring his three head captains, and every captain bring three of his officers. And come all of you to Hebron, and we will go together to the sons of Jacob and supplicate them that they shall form a peace treaty with us. And all those kings did as the king of Hebron had sent to them, for they were all under his counsel and command. And all the kings of Canaan assembled to go to the sons of Jacob to make peace with them. And the sons of Jacob returned and went to the portion of the field that was in Shechem, for they did not put confidence in the kings of the land. And the sons of Jacob returned and remained in the portion of the field ten days, and no one came to make war with them. And when the sons of Jacob saw that there was no appearance of war, they all assembled and went to the city of Shechem. 
and the sons of Jacob remained in Shechem. And at the expiration of forty days, all the kings of the Amorites assembled from all their places and came to Hebron, to Japhia, king of Hebron. And the number of kings that came to Hebron to make peace with the sons of Jacob was twenty-one kings. And the number of captains that came with them was sixty-nine. And their men were one hundred and eighty-nine. And all these kings and their men rested by Mount Hebron. And the king of Hebron went out with his three captains and nine men. And these kings resolved to go to the sons of Jacob to make peace. And they said unto the king of Hebron, Go thou before us with thy men, and speak for us unto the sons of Jacob, and we will come after thee and confirm thy words. And the king of Hebron did so. And the sons of Jacob heard that all the kings of Canaan had gathered together and rested in Hebron. And the sons of Jacob sent four of their servants as spies, saying, Go and spy these kings and search and examine their men, whether they are few or many. And if they are but few in number, number them all, and come back. And the servants of Jacob went secretly to these kings, and did as the sons of Jacob had commanded them. And on that day they came back to the sons of Jacob, and said unto them, We came unto those kings, and they are but few in number. We numbered them all, and behold, there were two hundred and eighty-eight kings and men. And the sons of Jacob said, They are but few in number, therefore we will not all go out to them. And in the morning the sons of Jacob rose up and chose sixty-two of their men, and ten of the sons of Jacob went with them. And they girt on their weapons of war, for they said, They are coming to make war with us, for they knew not that they were coming to make peace with them. And the sons of Jacob went with their servants to the gate of Shechem, toward those kings. And their father Jacob was with them. And when they had come forth, behold, the king of Hebron and his three captains and nine men with him were coming along the road against the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob lifted up their eyes and saw at a distance Japhia, king of Hebron, with his captains coming toward them. And the sons of Jacob took their stand at the place of the gate of Shechem, and did not proceed. And the king of Hebron continued to advance, he and his captains, until he came nigh to the sons of Jacob. And he and his captains bowed down to them to the ground. And the king of Hebron sat with his captains before Jacob and his sons. And the sons of Jacob said unto him, What has befallen thee, O king of Hebron? Why hast thou come to us this day? What dost thou require from us? And the king of Hebron said unto Jacob, I beseech thee, my lord, all the kings of the Canaanites have this day come to make peace with you. And the sons of Jacob heard the words of the king of Hebron, and they would not consent to his proposals, for the sons of Jacob had no faith in him, for they imagined that the king of Hebron had spoken deceitfully to them. And the king of Hebron knew from the words of the sons of Jacob that they did not believe his words. And the king of Hebron approached nearer to Jacob and said unto him, I beseech thee, my lord, to be assured that all these kings have come to you on peaceable terms, for they have not come with all their men, neither did they bring their weapons of war with them, for they have come to seek peace from my lord and his sons. And the sons of Jacob answered the king of Hebron, saying, Send thou to all these kings, and if thou speakest truth unto us, let them each come singly before us. And if they come unto us unarmed, we shall then know that they seek peace from us. And Japhia, king of Hebron, sent one of his men to the kings, and they all came before the sons of Jacob, and bowed down to them to the ground. And these kings sat before Jacob and his sons. And they spoke unto them, saying, We have heard all that you did to the kings of the Amorites with your sword and exceedingly mighty arm, so that no man could stand up before you. And we were afraid of you for the sake of our lives, lest it should befall us as it did to them. So 
we have come to you to form a treaty of peace between us. And now, therefore, contract with us a covenant of peace and truth, that you will not meddle with us, inasmuch as we have not meddled with you. And the sons of Jacob knew that they had really come to seek peace from them. And the sons of Jacob listened to them and formed a covenant with them. And the sons of Jacob swore unto them that they would not meddle with them. And all the kings of the Canaanites swore also to them. And the sons of Jacob made them tributary from that day forward. And after this, all the captains of these kings came with their men before Jacob with presents in their hands for Jacob and his sons. And they bowed down to him to the ground. And these kings then urged the sons of Jacob and begged of them to return all the spoil they had captured from the seven cities of the Amorites. And the sons of Jacob did so, and they returned all that they had captured, the women, the little ones, the cattle, and all the spoil which they had taken. And they sent them off, and they went away, each to his city. And all these kings again bowed down to the sons of Jacob, and they sent or brought them many gifts in those days. And the sons of Jacob sent off these kings and their men, and they went peaceably away from them to their cities. And the sons of Jacob also returned to their home, to Shechem. And there was peace from that day forward between the sons of Jacob and the kings of the Canaanites until the children of Israel came to inherit the land of Canaan. Jasher chapter 41 And at the revolution of the year the sons of Jacob journeyed from Shechem, and they came to Hebron to their father Isaac, and they dwelt there. But their flocks and herds they fed daily in Shechem, for there was in those days good and fat pasture. And Jacob and his sons and all their household dwelt in the valley of Hebron. And it was in those days, in that year, being the hundred and sixth year of the life of Jacob, in the tenth year of Jacob's coming from Padan Aram, that Leah, the wife of Jacob, died. She was fifty-one years old when she died in Hebron. And Jacob and his sons buried her in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which is in Hebron, which Abraham had bought from the children of Heth for the possession of a burial place. And the sons of Jacob dwelt with their father in the valley of Hebron. And all the inhabitants of the land knew their strength, and their fame went throughout the land. And Joseph, the son of Jacob, and his brother Benjamin, the sons of Rachel, the wife of Jacob, were yet young in those days, and did not go out with their brethren during the battles in all the cities of the Amorites. And when Joseph saw the strength of his brethren and their greatness, he praised them and extolled them, but he ranked himself greater than them and extolled himself above them. And Jacob his father also loved him more than any of his sons, for he was a son of his old age. And through his love toward him, he made him a coat of many colors. And when Joseph saw that his father loved him more than his brethren, he continued to exalt himself above his brethren. And he brought unto his father evil reports concerning them. And the sons of Jacob, seeing the whole of Joseph's conduct toward them, and that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him all the days. And Joseph was seventeen years old, and he was still magnifying himself above his brethren, and thought of raising himself above them. At that time he dreamed a dream, and he came unto his brothers and told them his dream. And he said unto them, I dreamed a dream, and behold, we were all binding sheaves in the field, and my sheaf rose and placed itself upon the ground, and your sheaves surrounded it, and bowed down to it. And his brethren answered him, and said unto him, What meanest this dream that thou didst dream? 
dost thou imagine in thy heart to reign or rule over us? And he still came, and told the thing to his father Jacob. And Jacob kissed Joseph when he heard these words from his mouth. And Jacob blessed Joseph. And when the sons of Jacob saw that their father had blessed Joseph, and had kissed him, and that he loved him exceedingly, they became jealous of him, and hated him the more. And after this Joseph dreamed another dream, and related the dream to his father in the presence of his brethren. And Joseph said unto his father and brethren, Behold, I have again dreamed a dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. And his father heard the words of Joseph and his dream. And seeing that his brethren hated Joseph on account of this matter, Jacob therefore rebuked Joseph before his brethren on account of this thing, saying, What meanest this dream which thou hast dreamed, and this magnifying thyself before thy brethren who are older than thou art? Dost thou imagine in thy heart that I and thy mother and thy eleven brethren will come and bow down to thee, that thou speakest these things? And his brethren were jealous of him on account of his words and dreams, and they continued to hate him. And Jacob reserved the dreams in his heart. And the sons of Jacob went one day to feed their father's flock in Shechem, for they were still herdsmen in those days. And whilst the sons of Jacob were that day feeding in Shechem, they delayed, and the time of gathering in the cattle was past, and they had not arrived. And Jacob saw that his sons were delayed in Shechem. And Jacob said within himself, Peradventure the people of Shechem have risen up to fight against them. Therefore they have delayed coming this day. And Jacob called Joseph his son, and commanded him, saying, Behold, thy brethren are feeding in Shechem this day, and behold, they have not yet come back. Go now, therefore, and see where they are, and bring me word back concerning the welfare of thy brethren and the welfare of the flock. And Jacob sent his son Joseph to the valley of Hebron. And Joseph came for his brothers to Shechem, and could not find them. And Joseph went about the field, which was near Shechem, to see where his brothers had turned. And he missed the road in the wilderness, and knew not which way he should go. And an angel of the Lord found him wandering in the road toward the field. And Joseph said unto the angel of the Lord, I seek my brethren. Hast thou not heard where they are feeding? And the angel of the Lord said unto Joseph, I saw thy brethren feeding here, and I heard them say that they will go feed in Dothan. And Joseph hearkened to the voice of the angel of the Lord, and he went to his brethren in Dothan, and he found them in Dothan feeding the flock. And Joseph advanced to his brethren, and before he had come nigh unto them, they had resolved to slay him. And Simeon said to his brethren, Behold, the man of dreams is coming unto us this day. And now therefore come, and let us kill him, and cast him in one of the pits that are in the wilderness. And when his father shall seek him from us, we will say an evil beast has devoured him. And Reuben heard the words of his brethren concerning Joseph, and he said unto them, You should not do this thing, for how can we look up to our father Jacob? Cast him into this pit to die there, but stretch not forth a hand upon him to spill his blood. And Reuben said this in order to deliver him from their hand, to bring him back to his father. And when Joseph came to his brethren, he sat before them. And they rose upon him, and seized him, and smote him to the earth, and stripped the coat of many colors which he had on. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And in the pit there was no water, but serpents and scorpions. And Joseph was afraid of the serpents and scorpions that were in the pit. And Joseph cried out with a loud voice, And the Lord hid the serpents and scorpions in the sides of the pit, and they did no harm unto Joseph. And Joseph called out from the pit to his brethren, and said unto them, What have I done unto you? And in what have I sinned? Why do you not fear the Lord concerning me? Am I not of your bones and flesh? And is not Jacob your father my father? 
Why do you do this thing unto me this day? And how will you be able to look up to our father Jacob? And he continued to cry out and call unto his brethren from the pit. And he said, O Judah, Simeon, and Levi, my brethren, lift me up from the place of darkness in which you have placed me, and come this day to have compassion on me, ye children of the Lord and sons of Jacob my father. And if I have sinned unto you, are you not the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? If they saw an orphan, they had compassion over him, or one that was hungry, they gave him bread to eat, or one that was thirsty, they gave him water to drink, or one that was naked, they covered him with garments. And how then will you withhold your pity from your brother? For I am of your flesh and bones. And if I have sinned unto you, surely you will do this on account of my father. And Joseph spoke these words from the pit, and his brethren could not listen to him, nor incline their ears to the words of Joseph. And Joseph was crying and weeping in the pit. And Joseph said, Oh, that my father knew this day the act which my brothers have done unto me, and the words which they have this day spoken unto me. And all his brethren heard his cries and weeping in the pit. And his brethren went and removed themselves from the pit, so that they might not hear the cries of Joseph and his weeping in the pit. Jasher chapter 42 And they went and sat on the opposite side, about the distance of a bowshot. And they sat there to eat bread. And whilst they were eating, they held counsel together what was to be done with him, whether to slay him or to bring him back to his father. They were holding the counsel when they lifted up their eyes and saw, and behold, there was a company of Ishmaelites coming at a distance by the road of Gilead, going down to Egypt. And Judah said unto them, What gain will it be to us if we slay our brother? Peradventure God will require him from us. This then is the counsel proposed concerning him, which you shall do unto him. Behold, this company of Ishmaelites going down to Egypt. Now therefore, come, let us dispose of him to them, and let not our hand be upon him. And they will lead him along with them, and he'll be lost among the people of the land, and we will not put him to death with our own hands. And the proposal pleased his brethren, and they did according to the word of Judah. And whilst they were discoursing about this matter, and before the company of Ishmaelites had come up to them, seven trading men of Midian passed by them. And as they passed, they were thirsty. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the pit in which Joseph was immured. And they looked, and behold, every species of bird was upon him. And these Midianites ran to the pit to drink water, for they thought that it contained water. And on coming before the pit, they heard the voice of Joseph crying and weeping in the pit. And they looked down into the pit, and they saw, and behold, there was a youth of a comely appearance and well favoured. And they called unto him and said, Who art thou? And who brought thee hither? And who placed thee in this pit in the wilderness? And they all assisted to raise up Joseph, and they drew him out, and brought him up from the pit, and took him, and went away on their journey and passed by his brethren. And these said unto them, Why do you do this, to take our servant from us, and to go away? Surely we place this youth in the pit, because he rebelled against us. And you come and bring him up and lead him away. Now then give us back our servant. And the Midianites answered and said unto the sons of Jacob, Is this your servant, or does this man attend you? Peradventure you are all his servants for he is more comely and well-favoured than any of you. And why do you all speak falsely unto us? Now therefore we will not listen to your words, nor attend to you. For we found the youth in the pit in the wilderness, and we took him. We will therefore go on. And all the sons of Jacob approached them, and rose up to them, and said unto them, Give us back our servant, and why will you all die by the edge of the sword? And the Midianites cried out against them, and they drew their swords, and approached to fight with the sons of Jacob. And behold, Simeon rose up from his seat against them, and sprang upon the ground, and drew his sword, 
and approach the Midianites, and he gave a terrible shout before them, so that his shouting was heard at a distance, and the earth shook at Simeon's shouting. And the Midianites were terrified on account of Simeon and the noise of his shouting, and they fell upon their faces and were excessively alarmed. And Simeon said unto them, Verily, I am Simeon, the son of Jacob the Hebrew, who have only with my brother destroyed the city of Shechem and the cities of the Amorites. So shall God moreover do unto me, that if all your brethren, the people of Midian, and also the kings of Canaan were come with you, they could not fight against me. Now therefore, give us back the youth whom you have taken, lest I give your flesh to the birds of the skies and the beasts of the field. And the Midianites were more afraid of Simeon. And they approached the sons of Jacob with terror and fright, and with pathetic words, saying, Surely you have said that the young man is your servant, and that he rebelled against you, and therefore you placed him in the pit. What then will you do with a servant who rebels against his master? Now therefore sell him unto us, and we will give you all that you require for him. And the Lord was pleased to do this, in order that the sons of Jacob should not slay their brother. And the Midianites saw that Joseph was of a comely appearance and well favored, and they desired him in their hearts, and were urgent to purchase him from his brethren. And the sons of Jacob hearkened to the Midianites, and they sold their brother Joseph to them for twenty pieces of silver. And Reuben their brother was not with them. And the Midianites took Joseph, and continued their journey to Gilead. They were going along the road, and the Midianites repented of what they had done in having purchased the young man. And one said to the other, What is this thing that we have done in taking this youth from the Hebrews, who is of comely appearance and well favored? Perhaps this youth is stolen from the land of the Hebrews. And why then have we done this thing? And if he should be sought for and found in our hands, we shall die through him. Now, surely, Hardy and powerful men have sold him to us, the strength of one of whom you saw this day. Perhaps they stole him from his land with their might and with their powerful arm, and have therefore sold him to us for the small value which we gave unto them. And whilst they were thus discoursing together, they looked. And behold, the company of Ishmaelites, which was coming at first, and which the sons of Jacob saw, was advancing toward the Midianites. And the Midianites said to each other, Come, let us sell this youth to the company of Ishmaelites who are coming toward us, and we'll take for him the little that we gave for him, and we will be delivered from this evil. And they did so. And they reached the Ishmaelites. And the Midianites sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, which they had given for him to his brethren. And the Midianites went on their road to Gilead, and the Ishmaelites took Joseph, and they let him ride upon one of the camels, and they were leading him to Egypt. And Joseph heard that the Ishmaelites were proceeding to Egypt, and Joseph lamented and wept at this thing that he was to be so far removed from the land of Canaan from his father. And he wept bitterly whilst he was riding upon the camel, and one of their men observed him and made him go down from the camel and walk on foot. And notwithstanding, this Joseph continued to cry and weep, and he said, O oh, my father, my father! And one of the Ishmaelites rose up and smote Joseph upon the cheek, and still he continued to weep. And Joseph was fatigued in the road, and was unable to proceed on account of the bitterness of his soul. And they all smote him and afflicted him in the road, and they terrified him, in order that he might cease from weeping. And the Lord saw the ambition of Joseph and his trouble, and the Lord brought down upon those men darkness and confusion, and the hand of every one that smote him became withered. And they said to each other, What is this thing that God has done to us in the road? And they knew not this befell them on account of Joseph. And the men proceeded on the road, and they passed along the road of Ephrath, where Rachel was buried. 
and Joseph reached his mother's grave. And Joseph hastened and ran to his mother's grave, and fell upon the grave and wept. And Joseph cried aloud upon his mother's grave, and he said, O my mother, my mother, O thou who didst give me birth, awake now, and rise and see thy son, how he has been sold for a slave, and no one to pity him. O rise, and see thy son, weep with me on account of my troubles, and see the heart of my brethren. Arouse, my mother, arouse, awake from thy sleep for me, and direct thy battles against my brethren. Oh, how have they stripped me of my coat, and sold me already twice for a slave, and separated me from my father, and there's no one to pity me. Arouse, and lay thy cause against them before God, and see whom God will justify in the judgment, and whom he will condemn. Rise, O mother, rise, awake from thy sleep, and see my father, how his soul is with me this day, and comfort him, and ease his heart. And Joseph continued to speak these words. And Joseph cried aloud, and wept bitterly upon his mother's grave, and he ceased speaking. And from bitterness of heart he became still as a stone upon the grave. And Joseph heard a voice speaking to him from beneath the ground, which answered him with bitterness of heart, and with a voice weeping and praying in these words, My son, my son Joseph, I have heard the voice of thy weeping, and the voice of thy lamentation. I have seen thy tears. I know thy troubles, my son, and it grieves me for thy sake, and abundant grief is added to my grief. Now therefore, my son, Joseph, my son, hope to the Lord, and wait for him, and do not fear, for the Lord is with thee. He will deliver thee from all trouble. Rise, my son, go down into Egypt with thy masters, and do not fear, for the Lord is with thee, my son. And she continued to speak like unto these words unto Joseph, and she was still. And Joseph heard this, and he wondered greatly at this, and he continued to weep. And after this one of the Ishmaelites observed him crying and weeping upon the grave, and his anger was kindled against him, and he drove him from there, and he smote him and cursed him. And Joseph said unto the men, May I find grace in your sight to take me back to my father's house? and he will give you abundance of riches. And they answered him, saying, Art thou not a slave? And where is thy father? And if thou hadst a father, thou wouldst not already twice have been sold for a slave for so little value. And their anger was roused against him. And they continued to smite him and to chastise him. And Joseph wept bitterly. And the Lord saw Joseph's affliction. And the Lord again smote these men and chastised them. And the Lord caused darkness to envelop them upon the earth. And the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and the earth shook at the voice of the thunder and of the mighty wind. And the men were terrified, and knew not where they should go. And the beasts and camels stood still, and they led them, but they would not go. They smote them, and they crouched upon the ground. And the men said to each other, What is this that God has done to us? What are our transgressions? And what are our sins that this thing has thus befallen us? And one of them answered and said unto them, Perhaps on account of the sin of afflicting this slave this thing happened this day to us. Now therefore implore him strongly to forgive us, and then we shall know on whose account this evil befalleth us. And if God shall have compassion over us, then we shall know that all this cometh to us on account of the sin of afflicting this slave. And the men did so, and they supplicated Joseph, and pressed him to forgive them. And they said, We have sinned to the Lord and to thee. Now therefore vouchsafe to request of thy God that he shall put away this death from amongst us, for we have sinned to him. And Joseph did according to their words. And the Lord hearkened to Joseph. And the Lord put away the plague which he had inflicted upon those men on account of Joseph. And the beasts rose up from the ground, and they conducted them, and they went on.
and the raging storm abated, and the earth became tranquilized. And the men proceeded on their journey to go down to Egypt. And the men knew that this evil had befallen them on account of Joseph. And they said to each other, Behold, we know that it was on account of his affliction that this evil befell us. Now therefore why should we bring this death upon our souls? Let us hold counsel what to do with this slave. And one answered and said, Surely he told us to bring him back to his father. Now therefore come, let us take him back, and we will go to the place that he will tell us, and take from his family the price that we gave for him, and we will then go away. And one answered again and said, Behold, this counsel is very good, but we cannot do so, for the way is very far from us, and we cannot go out of our road. And one more answered and said unto them, This is the counsel to be adopted. We will not swerve from it. Behold, we are this day going to Egypt, and when we shall have come to Egypt, we will sell him there at a high price, and we will be delivered from his evil. And this thing pleased the men. And they did so, and they continued their journey to Egypt with Joseph. Jasher chapter 43 And when the sons of Jacob had sold their brother Joseph to the Midianites, their hearts were smitten on account of him, and they repented of their acts. And they sought for him to bring him back, but could not find him. And Reuben returned to the pit in which Joseph had been put, in order to lift him out and restore him to his father. And Reuben stood by the pit, and he heard not a word, and he called out, Joseph! Joseph! And no one answered or uttered a word. And Reuben said, Joseph has died through fright, or some serpent has caused his death. And Reuben descended into the pit, and he searched for Joseph, and could not find him in the pit and he came out again. And Reuben tore his garments, and he said, The child is not there, and how shall I reconcile my father about him, if he be dead? And he went to his brethren, and found them grieving on account of Joseph, and counselling together how to reconcile their father about him. And Reuben said unto his brethren, I came to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not there. What then shall we say unto our father? For my father will only seek the lad from me. And his brethren answered him, saying, Thus and thus we did, and our hearts afterwards smote us on account of this act, and we now sit to seek a pretext how we shall reconcile our father to it. And Reuben said unto them, What is this you've done to bring down the grey hairs of our father in sorrow to the grave? The thing is not good that you have done. And Reuben sat with them. And they all rose up and swore to each other not to tell this thing unto Jacob. And they all said, The man who will tell this to our father or his household, or who will report this to any of the children of the land, we will all rise up against him and slay him with the sword. And the sons of Jacob feared each other in this matter, from the youngest to the oldest. And no one spoke a word, and they concealed the thing in their hearts. And they afterward sat down to determine and invent something to say unto their father Jacob concerning all these things. And Issachar said unto them, Here is an advice for you, if it seem good in your eyes to do this thing. Take the coat which belongeth to Joseph, and tear it, and kill a kid of the goats, and dip it in its blood, and send it to our father. And when he seeth it, he will say, An evil beast has devoured him. Therefore, Tear ye his coat, and behold his blood will be upon his coat, and by your doing this we shall be free of our father's murmurings. And Issachar's advice pleased them, and they hearkened unto him, and they did according to the word of Issachar, which he had counseled them. And they hastened, and took Joseph's coat and tore it. And they killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in the blood of the kid, and then trampled it in the dust. And they sent the coat to their father Jacob by the hand of Naphtali. And they commanded him to say these words, We had gathered in the cattle, and had come as far as the road to Shechem and father, when we found this coat upon the road in the wilderness, dipped in blood and in dust. 
Now therefore know whether it be thy son's coat or not. And Naphtali went, and he came unto his father, and he gave him the coat. And he spoke unto him all the words which his brethren had commanded him. And Jacob saw Joseph's coat, and he knew it. And he fell upon his face to the ground, and became as still as a stone. And he afterward rose up, and cried out with a loud and weeping voice, and he said, It is the coat of my son Joseph. And Jacob hastened, and sent one of his servants to his sons, who went to them and found them coming along the road with the flock. And the sons of Jacob came to their father about evening, and behold, their garments were torn, and dust was upon their heads. And they found their father crying out and weeping with a loud voice. And Jacob said unto his sons, Tell me truly what evil have you this day suddenly brought upon me? And they answered their father Jacob, saying, We were coming along this day after the flock had been gathered in, and we came as far as the city of Shechem by the road in the wilderness, and we found this coat filled with blood upon the ground, and we knew it, and we sent it unto thee, if thou couldst know it. And Jacob heard the words of his sons, and he cried out with a loud voice, and he said, It is the coat of my son. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is rent in pieces, for I sent him this day to see whether it was well with you and well with the flocks, and to bring me word again from you. And he went as I commanded him, and this has happened to him this day, whilst I thought my son was with you. And the sons of Jacob answered and said, He did not come to us, neither have we seen him from the time of our going out from thee until now. And when Jacob heard their words, he again cried out aloud, and he rose up and tore his garments, and he put sackcloth upon his loins, and he wept bitterly, and he mourned and lifted up his voice in weeping, and exclaimed and said these words, Joseph, my son, O oh, my son Joseph, I sent thee this day after the welfare of thy brethren. And behold, thou hast been torn in pieces. Through my hand has this happened to my son. It grieves me for thee, Joseph, my son. It grieves me for thee. How sweet wast thou to me during life, and now how exceedingly bitter is thy death to me. Oh, that I had died in thy stead, Joseph, my son, for it grieves me sadly for thee, my son. O oh, my son, my son, Joseph. My son, where art thou, and where hast thou been drawn? Arouse, arouse from thy place, and come and see my grief for thee. O oh, my son, Joseph, come now, and number the tears gushing from my eyes down my cheeks, and bring them up before the Lord, that his anger may turn from me. O oh, Joseph, my son, how didst thou fall by the hand of one of whom no one had fallen from the beginning of the world unto this day. For thou hast been put to death by the smiting of an enemy inflicted with cruelty, but surely I know that this has happened to thee on account of the multitude of my sins. Arouse now, and see how bitter is my trouble for thee, my son, although I did not rear thee nor fashion thee nor give thee breath and soul, but it was God who formed thee, and built thy bones, and covered them with flesh, and breathed in thy nostrils the breath of life, and then he gave thee unto me. Now truly God who gave thee unto me, he has taken thee from me, and such then has befallen thee. And Jacob continued to speak like unto these words concerning Joseph. And he wept bitterly. He fell to the ground and became still. And all the sons of Jacob, seeing their father's trouble, they repented of what they'd done, and they also wept bitterly. And Judah rose up and lifted his father's head from the ground and placed it upon his lap, and he wiped his father's tears from his cheeks. And Judah wept an exceeding great weeping, whilst his father's head was reclining upon his lap, still as a stone.
And the sons of Jacob saw their father's trouble, and they lifted up their voices and continued to weep. And Jacob was yet lying upon the ground, still as a stone. And all his sons and his servants and his servants' children rose up and stood round him to comfort him. And he refused to be comforted. And the whole household of Jacob rose up and mourned a great mourning on account of Joseph and their father's trouble. And the intelligence reached Isaac, the son of Abraham, the father of Jacob. And he wept bitterly on account of Joseph, he and all his household. And he went from the place where he dwelt in Hebron and his men with him. And he comforted Jacob his son, and he refused to be comforted. And after this, Jacob rose up from the ground, and his tears were running down his cheeks. And he said unto his sons, Rise up, and take your swords and your bows, and go forth into the field, and seek whether you can find my son's body, and bring it unto me that I may bury it. Seek also, I pray you, among the beasts, and hunt them, and that which shall come the first before you, seize, and bring it unto me. Perhaps the Lord will this day pity my affliction, and prepare before you that which did tear my son in pieces, and bring it unto me, and I will avenge the cause of my son. And his sons did as their father had commanded them. And they rose up early in the morning, and each took his sword and his bow in his hand. And they went forth into the field to hunt the beasts. And Jacob was still crying aloud and weeping, and walking to and fro in the house, and smiting his hands together, saying, Joseph, my son, Joseph, my son. And the sons of Jacob went into the wilderness to seize the beasts. And behold, a wolf came toward them, and they seized him, and brought him unto their father. And they said unto him, This is the first we have found, and we have brought him unto thee as thou didst command us, and thy son's body we could not find. And Jacob took the beast from the hands of his sons, and he cried out with a loud and weeping voice, holding the beast in his hand. And he spoke with a bitter heart unto the beast, Why didst thou devour my son Joseph? And how didst thou have no fear of the God of the earth, or of my trouble for my son Joseph? And thou didst devour my son for naught, because he committed no violence, and didst thereby render me culpable on this account. Therefore God will require him that is persecuted. And the Lord opened the mouth of the beast in order to comfort Jacob with its words. And it answered Jacob and spoke these words unto him. As God liveth, who created us in the earth, and as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I did not see thy son, neither did I tear him to pieces. But from a distant land I also came to seek my son, who went from me this day, and I know not whether he be living or dead. And I came this day into the field to seek my son, and your sons found me and seized me and increased my grief, and have this day brought me before thee. And I have now spoken all my words to thee. And now therefore, O son of man, I am in thy hands, and do unto me this day as it may seem good in thy sight. But by the life of God who created me, I did not see thy son, nor did I tear him to pieces, neither has the flesh of man entered my mouth all the days of my life. And when Jacob heard the words of the beast, he was greatly astonished, and sent forth the beast from his hand, and she went her way. And Jacob was still crying aloud and weeping for Joseph day after day, and he mourned for his son many days. Jasher chapter 44 and the sons of Ishmael, who had bought Joseph from the Midianites, who had bought him from his brethren, went to Egypt with Joseph. And they came upon the borders of Egypt. And when they came near unto Egypt, they met four men of the sons of Medan, the son of Abraham, who had gone forth from the land of Egypt on their journey. And the Ishmaelites said unto them, Do you desire to purchase the slave from us? 
And they said, Deliver him over to us. And they delivered Joseph over to them, and they beheld him, and he was a very comely youth, and they purchased him for twenty shekels. And the Ishmaelites continued their journey to Egypt, and the Medanim also returned that day to Egypt. And the Medanim said to each other, Behold, we have heard that Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, seeketh a good servant who shall stand before him to attend him, and to make him overseer over his house and all belonging to him. Now therefore come, let us sell him to him for what we may desire, if he be able to give unto us that which we shall require for him. And these Medanim went and came to the house of Potiphar, and they said unto him, We have heard that thou seekest a good servant to attend thee. Behold, we have a servant that will please thee, if thou canst give unto us that which we may desire, and we will sell him unto thee. And Potiphar said, Bring him before me, and I will see him. And if he please me, I will give unto you that which you require for him. And the Medanim went and brought Joseph, and placed him before Potiphar. And he saw him, and he pleased him exceedingly. And Potiphar said unto them, Tell me what you require for this youth. And they said, Four hundred pieces of silver we desire for him. And Potiphar said, I will give it you if you bring me the record of his sale to you, and will tell me his history, for perhaps he may be stolen. For this youth is neither a slave nor the son of a slave, but I observe in him the appearance of a goodly and handsome person. And the Medanim went and brought unto him the Ishmaelites, who had sold him to them. And they told him, saying, He is a slave, and we sold him to them. And Potiphar heard the words of the Ishmaelites in his giving the silver unto the Medanim. And the Medanim took the silver and went on their journey. And the Ishmaelites also returned home. And Potiphar took Joseph and brought him to his house that he might serve him. And Joseph found favor in the sight of Potiphar, and he placed confidence in him, and made him overseer over his house, and all that belonged to him he delivered over into his hand. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he became a prosperous man. And the Lord blessed the house of Potiphar for the sake of Joseph. And Potiphar left all that he had in the hand of Joseph. And Joseph was one that caused things to come in and go out, and everything was regulated by his wish in the house of Potiphar. And Joseph was eighteen years old, a youth with beautiful eyes and of comely appearance, and the like unto him was not in the whole land of Egypt. At that time, whilst he was in his master's house, going in and out of the house and attending his master, Zelica, his master's wife, lifted up her eyes toward Joseph, and she looked at him, and behold, he was a youth comely and well favoured, and she coveted his beauty in her heart, and her soul was fixed upon Joseph, and she enticed him day after day, and Zelica persuaded Joseph daily but Joseph did not lift up his eyes to behold his master's wife. And Zelica said unto him, How goodly are thy appearance and form! Truly I have looked at all the slaves, and have not seen so beautiful a slave as thou art. And Joseph said unto her, Surely he who created me in my mother's womb created all mankind. And she said unto him, how beautiful are thine eyes, with which thou hast dazzled all the inhabitants of Egypt, men and women. And he said unto her, How beautiful they are whilst we are alive! But shouldst thou behold them in the grave, surely thou wouldst move away from them. And she said unto him, How beautiful and pleasing are all thy words! Take now, I pray thee, the harp which is in the house, and play with thy hands, let us hear thy words. And he said unto her, 
How beautiful and pleasing are my words when I speak the praise of my God and his glory. And she said unto him, How very beautiful is the hair of thy head! Behold the golden comb which is in the house. Take it, I pray thee, and curl the hair of thy head. And he said unto her, How long wilt thou speak these words? Cease to utter these words to me, and rise and attend to thy domestic affairs. And she said unto him, There is no one in my house, and there is nothing to attend to but to thy words and to thy wish. Yet notwithstanding all this, she could not bring Joseph unto her. Neither did he place his eye upon her, but directed his eyes below to the ground. And Zelikah desired Joseph in her heart, that he should lie with her. And at that time that Joseph was sitting in the house doing his work, Zelikah came and sat before him, and she enticed him daily with her discourse to lie with her, or ever to look at her. But Joseph would not hearken to her. And she said unto him, If thou wilt not do according to my words, I will chastise thee with the punishment of death, and put an iron yoke upon thee. And Joseph said unto her, Surely God, who created man, looseth the fetters of prisoners, and it is he who will deliver me from thy prison and from thy judgment. And when she could not prevail over him to persuade him, and her soul being still fixed upon him, her desire threw her into a grievous sickness. And all the women of Egypt came to visit her, and they said unto her, Why art thou in this declining state, thou that lackest nothing? Surely thy husband is a great and esteemed prince in the sight of the king. Shouldst thou lack anything of what thy heart desireth? And Zelika answered them, saying, This day it shall be made known to you whence this disorder springs in which you see me. And she commanded her maidservants to prepare food for all the women. And she made a banquet for them. And all the women ate in the house of Zelika. And she gave them knives to peel the citrons to eat. And she commanded that they should dress Joseph in costly garments, and that he should appear before them. And Joseph came before their eyes. And all the women looked on Joseph, and could not take their eyes from off him. And they all cut their hands with the knives that they had in their hands, and all the citrons that were in their hands were filled with blood. And they knew not what they had done, but continued to look at the beauty of Joseph, and did not turn their eyelids from him. And Zelika saw what they had done, and she said unto them, What is this work that you have done? Behold, I gave you citrons to eat, and you have all cut your hands. And all the women saw their hands, and behold, they were full of blood, and their blood flowed down upon their garments. And they said unto her, This slave in your house has overcome us, and we could not turn our eyelids from him on account of his beauty. And she said unto them, Surely this happened to you in the moment that you looked at him, and you could not contain yourselves from him. How then can I refrain? when he's constantly in my house, and I see him day after day going in and out of my house. How then can I keep from declining, or even from perishing on account of this? And they said unto her, The words are true, for who can see this beautiful form in the house and refrain from him? And is he not thy slave and attendant in thy house? And why dost thou not tell him that which is in thy heart? and sufferest thy soul to perish through this matter. And she said unto them, I am daily endeavouring to persuade him, and he will not consent to my wishes. And I promised him everything that is good, and yet I could meet with no return from him. I am therefore in a declining state, as you see. And Zillichar became very ill on the account of her desire toward Joseph and she was desperately lovesick on account of him. And all the people of the house of Zelika and her husband knew nothing of this matter, 
that Zelica was ill on account of her love to Joseph. And all the people of her house asked her, saying, Why art thou ill and declining, and lackest nothing? And she said unto them, I know not this thing which is daily increasing upon me. And all the women and her friends came daily to see her, and they spoke with her, and she said unto them, This can only be through the love of Joseph. And they said unto her, Entice him, and seize him secretly. Perhaps he may hearken to thee, and put off this death from thee. And Zelica became worse from her love to Joseph, and she continued to decline, till she had scarce strength to stand. And on a certain day Joseph was doing his master's work in the house. And Zelica came secretly, and fell suddenly upon him. And Joseph rose up against her, and he was more powerful than she, and he brought her down to the ground. And Zelica wept on account of the desire of her heart toward him, and she supplicated him with weeping, and her tears flowed down her cheeks. And she spoke unto him in a voice of supplication and in bitterness of soul, saying, Hast thou ever heard, seen, or known of so beautiful a woman as I am, or better than myself, who speak daily unto thee, fall into a decline through love for thee, confer all this honour upon thee, and still wilt not hearken to my voice? And if it be through fear of thy master, lest he punish thee, as the king liveth, no harm shall come to thee from thy master through this thing. Now, therefore, pray listen to me, and consent for the sake of the honour which I have conferred upon thee, and put off this death from me. And why should I die for thy sake? And she ceased to speak. And Joseph answered her, saying, Refrain from me, and leave this matter to my master. Behold, my master knoweth not what there is with me in the house. For all that belongeth to him he has delivered into my hand. And how shall I do these things in my master's house? For he hath also greatly honoured me in his house. And he hath also made me overseer over his house, and he hath exalted me. And there is no one greater in his house than I am. And my master hath refrained nothing from me except thee, who art his wife. How canst thou then How then canst thou speak these words unto me? And how can I do this great evil and sin to God and to thy husband? Now therefore refrain from me, and speak no more such words as these, for I will not hearken to thy words. But Zelica would not hearken to Joseph when he spoke these words unto her but she daily enticed him to listen to her. And it was after this that the brook of Egypt was filled above all its sides, and all the inhabitants of Egypt went forth, and also the king and princes went forth with timbrels and dances, for it was a great rejoicing in Egypt, and a holiday at the time of the inundation of the sea Sihor, and they went there to rejoice all the day. And when the Egyptians went out to the river to rejoice, as was their custom, all the people of the house of Potiphar went with them. But Zelica would not go with them, for she said, I am indisposed. And she remained alone in the house, and no other person was with her in the house. And she rose up and ascended to her temple in the house, and dressed herself in princely garments, and she placed upon her head precious stones of onyx stones, inlaid with silver and gold. And she beautified her face and skin with all sorts of women's purifying liquids. And she perfumed the temple and the house with cassia and frankincense. And she spread myrrh and aloes. And she afterwards sat in the entrance of the temple and in the passage of the house through which Joseph passed to do his work. And behold, Joseph came from the field and entered the house to do his master's work. And he came to the place through which he had to pass, and he saw all the work of Zelica, and he turned back. 
And Zelikah saw Joseph turning back from her, and she called out to him, saying, What aileth thee, Joseph? Come to thy work. And behold, I will make room for thee, until thou shalt have passed to thy seat. And Joseph returned, and came to the house, and passed from thence to the place of his seat. And he sat down to do his master's work as usual. And behold, Zelikah came to him, and stood before him in princely garments and the scent from her clothes was spread to a distance. And she hastened and caught hold of Joseph and his garments. And she said unto him, As the king liveth, if thou wilt not perform my request, thou shalt die this day. And she hastened and stretched forth her hand and drew a sword from beneath her garments, and she placed it upon Joseph's neck. And she said, Rise and perform my request, and if not thou diest this day. And Joseph was afraid of her at her doing this thing. And he rose up to flee from her, and she seized the front of his garments, and in the terror of his flight the garment which Zelikah seized was torn. And Joseph left the garment in the hand of Zelikah. And he fled and got out, for he was in fear. And when Zelikah saw that Joseph's garment was torn, and that he left it in her hand and had fled. She was afraid of her life, lest the report should spread concerning her. And she rose up and acted with cunning, and put off the garments in which she was dressed, and she put on her other garments. And she took Joseph's garment, and she laid it beside her, and she went and seated herself in the place where she had sat in her illness before the people of her house had gone out to the river. And she called a young lad who was then in the house, and she ordered him to call the people of the house to her. And when she saw them, she said unto them with a loud voice and lamentation, See what a Hebrew your master has brought me in the house, for he came this day to lie with me. For when you had gone out, he came to the house, and seeing that there was no person in the house, he came unto me and caught hold of me with intent to lie with me. And I seized his garments, and tore them, and called out against him with a loud voice. And when I lifted up my voice, he was afraid of his life, and left his garment before me, and fled. And the people of her house spoke nothing, but their wrath was very much kindled against Joseph. And they went to his master, and told him the words of his wife. And Potiphar came home enraged, and his wife cried out to him, saying, What is this thing that thou hast done unto me in bringing a Hebrew servant into my house? For he came unto me this day to sport with me. Thus did he do unto me this day. And Potiphar heard the words of his wife, and he ordered Joseph to be punished with severe stripes. And they did so to him. And whilst they were smiting him, Joseph called out with a loud voice, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven, and he said, O Lord God, thou knowest that I am innocent of all these things, and why shall I die this day through falsehood by the hand of these uncircumcised wicked men whom thou knowest? And whilst Potiphar's men were beating Joseph, he continued to cry out and weep. And there was a child there, eleven months old, and the Lord opened the mouth of the child, and he spake these words before Potiphar's men, who were smiting Joseph, saying, What do you want of this man? And why do you this evil unto him? My mother speaketh falsely, and uttereth lies. Thus was the transaction. And the child told them accurately all that had happened, and all the words of Zelikah to Joseph day after day did he declare unto them. And all the men heard the words of the child, and they wondered greatly at the child's words. And the child ceased to speak and became still. And Potiphar was very much ashamed at the words of his son and he commanded his men not to beat Joseph any more. And the men ceased beating Joseph. 
and Potiphar took Joseph and ordered him to be brought to justice before the priests, who were judges belonging to the king, in order to judge him concerning this affair. And Potiphar and Joseph came before the priests, who were the king's judges, and he said unto them, Decide, I pray you, what judgment is due to a servant, for thus has he done. And the priests said unto Joseph, Why didst thou do this thing to thy master? And Joseph answered them, saying, Not so, my lords, thus was the matter. And Potiphar said unto Joseph, Surely I entrusted in thy hands all that belonged to me, and I withheld nothing from thee but my wife. And how couldst thou do this evil? And Joseph answered, saying, Not so, my lord. As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, my lord, the word which thou didst hear from thy wife is untrue. For thus was the affair this day. A year has elapsed to me since I have been in thy house. Hast thou seen any iniquity in me, or anything which might cause thee to demand my life? And the priests said unto Potiphar, Send, we pray thee, and let them bring before us Joseph's torn garment, and let us see the tear in it. And if it shall be that the tear is in the front of the garment, then his face must have been opposite to her, and she must have caught hold of him to come to her, and with deceit did thy wife do all that she has spoken. And they brought Joseph's garment before the priests who were judges, and they saw, and behold, a tear was in front of Joseph. And all the judging priests knew that she had pressed him. And they said, The judgment of death is not due to this slave, for he has done nothing. But his judgment is that he be placed in the prison house on account of the report, which through him has gone forth against thy wife. And Potiphar heard their words, and he placed him in the prison house, the place where the king's prisoners are confined. And Joseph was in the house of confinement twelve years. And notwithstanding this, his master's wife did not turn from him, and she did not cease from speaking to him day after day to hearken to her. And at the end of three months, Zelica continued going to Joseph to the house of confinement day by day, and she enticed him to hearken to her. And Zelica said unto Joseph, how long wilt thou remain in this house? But hearken now to my voice, and I will bring thee out of this house. And Joseph answered her, saying, It is better for me to remain in this house than to hearken to thy words, to sin against God. And she said unto him, If thou wilt not perform my wish, I will pluck out thine eyes, add fetters to thy feet and deliver thee into the hands of them whom thou didst not know before. And Joseph answered her and said, Behold, the God of the whole earth is able to deliver me from all that thou canst do unto me. For he openeth the eyes of the blind, and looseth those that are bound, and preserveth all strangers who are unacquainted with the land. And when Zelica was unable to persuade Joseph to hearken to her, she left off going to entice him. And Joseph was still confined in the house of confinement. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, and all his brethren who were in the land of Canaan, still mourned and wept in those days on account of Joseph. For Jacob refused to be comforted for his son Joseph, and Jacob cried aloud and wept and mourned all those days. Jasher chapter 45 And it was at that time in that year, which is the year of Joseph's going down to Egypt after his brothers had sold him, that Reuben the son of Jacob went to Timnah and took unto him for a wife Eliram, the daughter of Avi the Canaanite, and he came to her. 
And Eliram, the wife of Reuben, conceived and bare him Hanok, Pelu, Ketzron, and Carmi, four sons. And Simeon, his brother, took his sister Dinah for a wife. And she bare unto him Memuel, Yamin, Ohad, Jachin, and Zokar, five sons. And he afterward came to Buna, the Canaanitish woman. The same is Buna, whom Simeon took captive from the city of Shechem. And Buna was before Dinah, and attended upon her. And Simeon came to her, and she bare unto him Seol. And Judah went at that time to Adullam, and he came to a man of Adullam, and his name was Hira. And Judah saw there the daughter of a man from Canaan, and her name was Eliath, the daughter of Shua. And he took her, and came to her. And Eliath bare unto Judah Er, Onan, and Shiloh, three sons. And Levi and Issachar went to the land of the east, and they took unto themselves for wives the daughters of Jobab, the son of Yoktan, the son of Eber. And Jobab, the son of Yoktan, had two daughters. And the name of the elder was Adana, and the name of the younger was Arida. And Levi took Adana, and Issachar took Arida, and they came to the land of Canaan, to their father's house. And Adana bare unto Levi, Gershon, Kehath, and Merari, three sons. And Arida bare unto Issachar, Tola, Puva, Job, and Shamron, four sons. And Dan went to the land of Moab, and took for a wife Aphnaleth, the daughter of Camadon, the Moabite. And he brought her to the land of Canaan. And Aphnaleth was barren, and she had no offspring. And God afterward remembered Aphnaleth, the wife of Dan. And she conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Cushim. And Gad and Naphtali went to Haran, and took from thence the daughters of Amiram, the son of Uz, the son of Nahor, for wives. And these are the names of the daughters of Amiram. The name of the elder was Merimah, and the name of the younger Uzith. And Naphtali took Merimah, and Gad took Uzith, and brought them to the land of Canaan, to their father's house. And Merimai bare unto Naphtali, Yaxiel, Gunai, Jazer, and Shalem, four sons. And Uzith bare unto Gad, Zephion, Chagai, Shunai, Esbon, Eri, Aradai, and Aralai, seven sons. And Asher went forth and took Adon, the daughter of Aphlal, the son of Hadad, the son of Ishmael, for a wife. And he brought her to the land of Canaan. And Adon, the wife of Asher, died in those days. She had no offspring. And it was after the death of Adon that Asher went to the other side of the river and took for a wife Hadura, the daughter of Abimael, the son of Eber, the son of Shem. And the young woman was of a comely appearance, and a woman of sense, and she had been the wife of Malkiel, the son of Elam, the son of Shem. And Hadura bare a daughter unto Malkiel, and he called her name Sirach. And Malkiel died after this, and Hadura went and remained in her father's house. And after the death of the wife of Asher, he went and took Hadura for a wife, and brought her to the land of Canaan. And Sirach, her daughter, he also brought with them. And she was three years old. And the damsel was brought up in Jacob's house. And the damsel was of a comely appearance. And she went in the sanctified ways of the children of Jacob. She lacked nothing. And the Lord gave her wisdom and understanding. And Hadura, the wife of Asher, conceived and bare unto him Yimna, Yishva, Yishvai, and Bariah, four sons. And Zebulun went to Midian, and took for a wife Merishah, the daughter of Molad, the son of Abida, the son of Midian, and brought her to the land of Canaan. And Merishah bare unto Zebulun, Sered, Elon, and Yakmiel, three sons. And Jacob sent to Aram, the son of Sober, the son of Terah, and took for his son Benjamin, Michaliah, the daughter of Aram. And she came to the land of Canaan, to the house of Jacob. And Benjamin was ten years old when he took Michaliah, the daughter of Aram, for a wife. And Michaliah conceived, 
and bear unto Benjamin, Bela, Beka, Ashbel, Gera, and Naaman, five sons. And Benjamin went afterward and took for a wife Arabath, the daughter of Shomron, the son of Abraham, in addition to his first wife, and he was eighteen years old. And Arabath bare unto Benjamin, Achai, Vosh, Mapim, Chapim, and Ord, five sons. And in those days Judah went to the house of Shem, and took Tamar, the daughter of Elam, the son of Shem, for a wife, for his firstborn heir. An heir came to his wife Tamar, and she became his wife. And when he came to her, he outwardly destroyed his seed. And his work was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And it was after the death of Er, Judah's firstborn, that Judah said to Onan, Go to thy brother's wife and marry her as the next of kin, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan took Tamar for a wife, and he came to her. And Onan also did like unto the work of his brother, and his work was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him also. And when Onan died, Judah said unto Tamar, Remain in thy father's house until my son Shiloh shall have grown up. And Judah did no more delight in Tamar to give her unto Shiloh, for he said, Peradventure he will also die like his brothers. And Tamar rose up and went and remained in her father's house. And Tamar was in her father's house for some time. And at the revolution of the year, Eliath, the wife of Judah, died. And Judah was comforted for his wife. And after the death of Eliath, Judah went up with his friend Hira to Timnah to shear their sheep. And Tamar heard that Judah had gone up to Timnah to shear the sheep, and that Shiloh was grown up, and Judah did not delight in her. And Tamar rose up and put off the garments of her widowhood, and she put a veil upon her, and she entirely covered herself, and she went and sat in the public thoroughfare, which is upon the road to Timnah. And Judah passed, and saw her, and took her, and he came to her, and she conceived by him. And at the time of being delivered, behold, there were twins in her womb. And he called the name of the first Perez, and the name of the second Zerah.